We're here to comfort our brother because he's been abusing drugs and he's hitting his girlfriend. He'd choke her and you could hear her head hitting up against the wall and we have to call the cops. So she was a month away from having a baby and she fell on her stomach running away from your brother. When he gets drunk or starts using drugs, he just gets really violent. Has really. your brother ever hit you? He's choked me before. Aren't you a mother first before anything else? Are you afraid of him? What times are you afraid of him? When he's really drunk. And how often is that? All the time. You can't be healthy for your baby being scared all the time. Just want you to get some help. You're accused of abusing your pregnant girlfriend? Yeah. So do me a favor, stand up, okay? <laughs> this woman, she's carrying your child. I don't get how anybody could ever hit a pregnant woman, knowing that there's a baby in there. Hey, the baby's in her stomach. I don't hit her stomach. You got a woman that's standing by you, and she's saying, let's get some help. And I'm here, I'm telling you, here's the help. So when did we have to get help? Take the damn help, that's what everybody's saying, that's what I'm thinking. Welcome to the show. My guests are sisters Tikiana and Taylor. Mm -hmm. And Taylor, you're 16, and Tikiana, you're 14, right? And you're here today because of your brother. Tell me what's going on with your brother. Um, we're here to confront our brother because he's been abusing drugs and he's hitting his girlfriend and putting his hands on her. Like there's been incidents where he'd choke her and you could hear her and he'd hear her head hitting up against the wall and we'd have to call the cops on him. And like she, when she was eight months pregnant, um, she asked him if he could get her some food and he was drunk and um, I don't know why he got mad but he hit her and she started bleeding. So we took her to the bathroom um, to wipe her off, and we locked him out of the house. And then, so he broke my mom's window to get inside the house. And then we had, I had to hold him, me and my sister had to hold him back so that he wouldn't get to her. And she ran outside and she even fell on her stomach while she was pregnant to run to the car. How far along was she pregnant? Eight months. So she was a month away from having a baby. And she fell on her stomach running away from your brother. Yeah to get to the car so she could get away because um, he was trying to hit her again because we said we were going to call the cops and he was like, if you're going to call the cops, I'll give you a reason. Why does your brother act like this? Uh, when he gets drunk or starts using drugs, he just gets really violent. And what other things does he do? Um, he just hits, like he's really violent. He yells and he'll scream, like he'll call her hateful names and he does it to, he's disrespectful to everyone, his fiance, to us, my mother. Does he ever do it when he's sober? Uh, I haven't, but most of the time I always see him is he's always. He's always drunk or, yeah, always. or high on drugs. And and your relationship with his, his fiance, you girls get along with yeah, her? Yeah, that's like my best friend. I she's your best dad, friend. So she pretty much is. We've been <coughs> really good friends for a long time. And w what do you feel when you see that your brother is pretty violent to her? I hate it. It makes me just, oh, I hate it. Why does she stay with your brother if she's... I think because she's scared of what he'll do if she tries to leave him. I think that's he's, why. He's that violent? He's made threats to do things to her family and things if she leaves him and stuff. He's, yeah, he's that violent. When he's very violent with you, with this girl, do you call the police? Yeah, there's been I don't I've only called him one time. I don't know about any other time that we've had to call him, but I know one time there was an incident where we had to call the police. The police lock him up? No, they do, they don't even do anything. They just talk to him, and he's drunk whenever he talks to the police, and they don't even do anything. And he gets an attitude with them and everything. That's he, she, Shara usually doesn't want him to like get locked up. She usually doesn't want us to call the cops. Now I understand that you've been getting into trouble, right? Is that right, Tikiana? And until you recently moved, what were you doing? Um, I was involved in a gang and um, I used to do drugs. You, what kind of drugs would you be doing? Like pot. I would and drink. If, I mean, you, you, you're 14 years old. Why would you be doing those things? 
Like, I've seen my brother do it, and I just figured, and I've seen him be in a gang, and I thought since he did it and it's coming down in the family, I figured I'd just be in it too. And have, do you continue to do these things, or? No. And what made you stop? The way I act whenever I realize, whenever I, I realize that I act like kind of stupid, so I, I don't do that no more. And you were able to, and you figured that out on your own, huh? That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> what do you want to happen today? Um, I want him to change. I, w I don't want him to hit on his fiance no more, and I don't want him to stop abusing drugs and doing. And your relationship with your brother? I don't talk to him. And why don't you talk to him? Because uh, every time he's around, we have to deal with him being drunk and putting his hands on his baby mama. We don't, we don't want to be around that. This woman is, you know, she's carrying your child. But I don't get how anybody could ever hit a pregnant woman, knowing that there's a baby in there. It ain't hurting the baby. Are you afraid of him? What times are you afraid of him? When he's really drunk. And how often is that? All the time. Does really? your brother ever hit you? No. He's choked me before. He's choked you before. And why did he choke you? Because uh, he had, like, he was disrespecting my mom and had her up at 1 o'clock in the morning, and she had to get up early for work, and he was on parole. He wasn't even supposed to have any friends over or anything. But he had a whole bunch of friends over my mom's house, and they made me mad. And then he wanted to use the phone to call more friends and go drink. And so I unplugged the phone, and I was like, you're not going to use the phone. I said, Mom is up at 1 o'clock in the morning, and she needs to be asleep, but she's trying to tell you to let your friends leave. You won't even listen to her. And he got mad at me because I wouldn't, because I unplugged the phone, and he choked me. And then my mom stood up and was like, um, had to get on to him and grab him, and so he let go of me. All right, so what, what I'd like you to do, ladies, is I'm going to ask you to leave the stage. I'm going to talk to your brother, and at some point during the show, we'll bring you back out. Okay. Okay. All right, let's bring, let's bring your brother out. Cameron, let's bring him out. How you doing, Cameron? You got your two sisters... You know, you're, you're accused of abusing your pregnant girlfriend. You hear your sister say that, right? Yeah. Then do me a favor. Stand up, okay? Um, you, you hear your sisters come out, and they're, they're scared of you. You're their older brother. They say you're 19 years old, that you're in a gang, that you, all you do is drink, that you're doing drugs and that you beat up your pregnant girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. When you hear your sisters, I mean, this isn't like, you know, an ex-girlfriend that's got an ax to grind with you. These are your two little sisters, right? Yeah. When you hear them saying that, what's your response to that? I really ain't got no response. None at all? No. Not like they're telling the truth, they're lying. They well, they probably, the, they're probably telling the truth. They're probably, or they are? They are. Okay. Matter, you know, hitting her. Th your, your girlfriend, you're breaking a window trying to get at her. She runs out the door. She's eight months pregnant. She's falling down. You're hitting her. That's all true? Somewhat. Y'all you, you ain't got the full story. Well, I'm willing to give you a chance to tell it. I mean, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. I mean, I got to do what I got to do to survive out in the streets. You know, and right now, me and my baby mama, we ain't really on good terms right now. I mean, I gotta do what I gotta do to feed my daughter, you feel me? And, I mean, you, you, ain't, you, you, ain't gonna, you ain't gonna come to Tulsa and work a nine to five, so to five for me and my family. Are you gonna come to Chicago and work a nine to five to take care of me and my family? No. I gotta. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I don't expect you to, but you certainly don't expect me to, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so I go about and I provide for my family. I come to work and I work a job and I get paid and I go home and I take care of my kids and my wife, right? All right, but, well, but what do you, do? You, you don't live the life I live. I mean, you wasn't growing up like I was growing up. You How did you grow up? I mean, thugs. I mean, I, I was growing up around 
gangbangers, you know, I mean, selling drugs. You know, I wasn't top the right things. You know, I grew up seeing, I grew up seeing pistol play, drugs. Believe it or not, I was grown up, when I was growing up, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth either. All right. And there was gangs in my neighborhood, and there was bad guys, and guys that went to jail that I grew up with, and there was guys that didn't go to jail. And I happened to be one of the guys that didn't go to jail. Now you say you got caught up. You got caught up with the bad guys, right? Yeah. You got caught. Are you in a gang? Yeah. And why do you, just out of curiosity's sake, everybody has a different story. Why are you in a gang? I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's just things I saw. You know, I mean, at the time I thought it was cool, but you know, I'm, all, I'm, I'm not just past my knees. I mean, it's over my chest. You feel me? No, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, it's, it's what I seen as a kid growing up. So I decided to try to follow that lifestyle. As I thought, you got it, older. I thought it was cool, yeah. And, and what do you feel about that now? Now I feel like I'm already into it too deep. Okay. So, I mean, it ain't, ain't, I try to pull back. I've tried to pull back. And, and when you say you tried to pull back, what, what did you do? I mean, I've tried to get a job. You know, I can't keep a job. You tried to live a more legitimate, more yeah. law abiding life. Gang, since you were nine years old, yeah. you were shot when you were 10. Yeah. Shot at, or you were actually shot? I was actually shot. You had a bullet going through your body when you yeah, were I had a zone. bullet hit right here and go out here. Uh, who was shooting at you at 10 years old? I really can't put my finger on who it was. You just, I mean, maybe you were just caught up in gunplay? Yeah, word, words was exchanged. You know, I, he said something, I said something back. You know, he fired off, so. No. And I was 10 at the time when it happened, so, you know, me, me getting hit at 10, I'm like, whoa, you know what I mean? Okay, I get hit. Some, if somebody come and shoot me at 10 years old, okay, well, I mean, come that's on pretty, that's, that's pretty brutal okay. to be shot at and 10 And then years once, old. I got, once I got shot when I was 10, you know, I just jumped in it real hard. You know, I tried, I tried to do something so, so I could protect myself. You know, I had to run with pistols every day, you know. So and, you started carrying a gun when you were at a very young age? Yeah. And that gave you a sense of, of protection? Well, of feeling? I, fe I, felt like, I felt like it was protecting me. I mean, still to this day, you know, when I head back to the T now, I'm going to have a pistol on me because, you know, I can't walk the street, you know, and just feel safe like that. You feel me? You carry a gun so you make yourself feel safe. Yeah. To protect yourself. Protect myself. Now, not growing up with the silver spoon and all that, you're a smart guy. You carry a gun to protect yourself. Why the hell would you then go and beat the woman that is carrying your child? I mean, you see what I'm saying? You, you feel me? Yeah, I kind of feel you. I might be speaking out of turn here. No, you're but right. But you have two sisters. You certainly wouldn't want anybody putting their hands on them. You're right. Well, well, why wouldn't you afford that to every female? <laughs> I mean, especially, again, it, it blows my mind. This woman, is, you know, she's carrying your child. Not a stranger's, your child. You should never put your hand on a woman. I say it all the time. But I don't get how anybody could ever hit a pregnant woman, knowing that there's a baby in there. It ain't hurting the baby. <laughs> you're not that dumb. Please tell me you're not that dumb. Aren't you a mother first before anything else? I just want him to get some help. I don't get how anybody could ever hit a pregnant woman. It ain't hurting the baby. You're not that dumb. Please tell me you're not that dumb. Your girlfriend, your fiance, she fell and she could have, what if, what if it would have ended her life? She, she the one took off out of the house. Didn't nobody tell because her Because you're breaking the house? in the house. You're breaking the windows. Okay, well, she, she could have she came outside and talked to me. Like, I told her to come outside and talk to me. She Why would she come, come out and talk, talk to me? If you're dad, hey, listen, if you're that violent, you're going to start breaking in windows and chasing her. Why the hell would she just voluntarily come out and talk to you? Well, she should talk to Were me. You Were you high? Were you drunk? No, I, thought I, was, I, was, I think I was drinking that day. Well, she should have talked to me when I told her to come outside and talk to me. Why? We could have stopped it right then. You know, and then my yeah. little sisters, my little sisters wanted to get in between. And, and when my little sisters wanted to get in between, you know between what? Them, they're, they're doing something worse. that's your job. They're doing your job. They're protecting that little girl. What they need to do is mind their business. <laughs> my, I, I, again, 
I'm just going to say it. When you decide to bring children in the world and they count on you and they don't have anybody else, like you said, you were 13 years old. You didn't have anybody. You're, you're running away. You're on your own. You think she could take care of herself? I mean, Look at that picture of your baby. She I mean, can't take care of herself. I'm going to take care of her. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. I'm going I'm to I'm take care of my daughter. You know, Sarah, she's a grown woman. She could take care of herself. You're, first of all, you're 19 years old. Right. Okay. You already have two children. You, you, you have to grow up real fast here. You're, and you're, you're, if you're not willing to commit to this woman, one, if you can't commit to, like, I'm going to protect her, I'm going to provide safety for her, I'm going to do everything I can for her. If you cannot commit to her and be there for her, stop having kids. Stop having kids with her. <laughs> All you're doing by what what you're doing, the way you're behaving, the way the decisions you're making, all you're doing, take a good look at her. All you're doing is cheating her. You're cheating her. <laughs> if I'm not doing it, if I'm not coming down there to Tulsa and, and, and putting money on your table, what are you doing to put money on your table? What are you doing to provide for your family? You asking me what am I doing? So yeah, what I, are you I mean, doing? I'm hustling. Oh, uh, everybody says that. I'm hustling. I'm, I'm, I'm kind and I'm doing this. What, what is hustling doing? Selling drugs, yep. robbing people, what? Selling drugs. Selling drugs. Yeah. So good possibility you might get caught selling drugs, right? Yeah. And what happens when you get caught selling drugs? You make buy. You get out and try to do it different. I'm gonna, I'll ask you the question again. <laughs> What's a good possibility when you're selling drugs? What happens to you? You get locked up. You get locked up. And you might get put away for a few years. Mm -hmm. So while you're locked up and you're eating your three squares a day and you got that cot to lay on, who's taking care of that little girl? Her mama. Her mama, the one that you beat, that you don't care, that you think like, ah, I'm not committed to her. So, now you, so a woman that you don't respect, which you don't, it's by not, your actions, it's what not you like said. I don't care about her. I'm always, I'm always going to care about her. She's always going to have But you won't provide for her. Hmm? You said you won't provide for her. So my thing is, you're going to go away for a few years, and, oh, yeah, you're going to leave that responsibility for a woman that you, won't, you don't even want to provide for. You're going to leave this, the most precious thing in your life, I would hope so. Maybe, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But this little girl right here should be the most precious thing, and you're going to leave that responsibility to somebody you really don't care about and you really don't want to provide for. Eh, go ahead. Take care of my baby. You, you're going to roll the dice with living your life? Ah, I'm going to sell drugs. Aren't you smart enough to do anything else other than that? Yeah, I've tried. And? Mm, it always fails. And why does it fail? Because you choose to make it fail? Calling in? Eh, I'm not coming in today. I'm, I'm hung over. I don't feel good. I'd rather lay around the house. That's not trying. That's, that's doing a little bit and then, ah, I, I don't want to grind it out. I, the, it's easier ways to make money. I could sell dope for a couple hours and make a lot more. I mean, I've, it's not like I just lost my job and didn't try to go get another job. I tried to go get another job. Don't nobody want to hire me, so... I mean, I have no other choice. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit at the house and keep going, try to fill out applications. Ain't nobody going to hire me. And my daughter ain't got no diapers. She ain't got no formula. So I got to go out and I got to get it. I got to go out and get it. I got to go out. I got to hustle. I got to sell this. I got to do something to put something in my... I got to do something to put some food in my daughter's mouth. That's why I always tell people, plan. Plan to have children. Have a plan. How am I going to take care of them? How am I going to be there for them? Not just, oops, I got a child. What am I going to do now? Are you proud of selling drugs? No. What, what, what do you think that does? Do you think that helps the community or destroys the community? It destroys it. A mother has to look out the window. Boy, I wonder if they're selling drugs today. I wonder if I can let my child go out and play. I wonder if I can let my child walk to school today. I wonder if she can get by that guy without her buying drugs or my son buying drugs. You know what I mean? Do you feel me?
Someday your little girl's going to walk to school. You want a bunch of people selling dope on her way to school. All the bad temptations out there. What do you sell? Weed. Weed. Anything else? Water. <coughs> what is that? Water. PCP. PCP. Anything yeah. else? Crack. Crack. How's that? Crack. That would be a, a drug that would be very addictive, right? Yep. You ever seen crackheads? Yeah. Every day. Not, not a pretty sight, is it? Destroys people. They become the living dead, actually, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're like skeletons walking around. And think about it. So you're going to grow up. You're selling crack to somebody. What if somebody sells crack to your daughter someday? Some, some, somebody. Someday makes your daughter into a crackhead. That doesn't unsettle you a little bit? doesn't say like, man, what the, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. Because there's consequences in life with everything you do. You're, you're, the, you're, you're telling me you're the problem in the neighborhood. Yeah. You're not the solution, right? I love you to death. And we don't like not being able to be around our big brother because every time we want to come around, he want to act a fool. We want to be there. We want you to be a part of the family. We want you to be around. I don't want to stop. And I don't want nobody to get hurt. I mean, your 14-year-old sister says, hey, my brother was a decent guy at one time. He protected me. He watched out for me. And now, all I do is I watch him get drunk, hit his pregnant, his pregnant girlfriend, his fiance. These are your sisters. You're supposed to be a role model to them. And, and, and she did look up to you. Now she doesn't. Now she's, they're afraid of you. Your sisters don't even want to be around you because they're afraid of you. I mean, do they have to strap to feel better, to feel uh -huh. safe? I mean, I don't want them to. Of, of course not. And I mean, I see that they're following in my footsteps. Yeah, your sister joined the gang just like you, was doing drugs just like you. But even at the tender age of 14, she figured out, man, this isn't for me. I better stop this. <laughs> Does that bother you at all that your sister's... Especially your 14 year old, your little sister going down that path? Yeah, it bothers me. I know this is stupid, but I can only do the show based on my life experiences, and, and I can only talk about how. And I remember my little sister when I was little, I collected baseball cards when I was a young kid. And my little sister started buying baseball cards because I was buying baseball cards, and she just looked up to me. She was my little sister. So she'd have her little stacks of baseball cards on the windowsill. And your little sister is joining gangs and doing drugs. That could potentially ruin her life. And you know why? Because she's looking at you, what you're doing. You feel responsible for that? Yeah. Well, you know what, Cameron? I'm going to give you a chance to talk to your sisters. Let's bring your sisters out. What do you want to say to your brother? I just want to tell you that you're wrong and you shouldn't be putting your hands on females. I mean, you're talking about you got to carry guns on you for protection, but why put yourself in that situation to where you got to carry a gun and put yourself in that situation to where you do get shot at? Why do you sit up there? You selling drugs and everything like that. I don't understand you got to put food on your table for your kids and stuff like that, but that ain't the way to do it. What happens is... What happens if one day one of them turn around and they follow you to where you go, you go stay the night with Shayra? What happens whenever you stay the night with her, they find out where you is and everything like that, you turn around and you leave, they want to go in the house, get the drugs that you sold to them because they want some more. What happens if Shayra and your kids end up dead because of that? How are you going to be looking then? How are you going to be looking whenever my niece gets older and she's turning around, she sees what daddy's doing, so she thinks it's okay for 
her to go through the same situation. She see her mama getting beat, so what happens whenever she finds a dude and he's doing the same thing to her? She gonna stay around because, you know, that's, I blame Sherry for that too. She gonna stay around because she see mama staying around doing the same thing, so she's gonna think it's okay. I love you to death, and we don't like not being able to be around our big brother because every time he want to come around, he want to act a fool. We want to be there. We want you to be a part of the family. We want you to be around. But we can't because you want to act a fool every time that you is around. So, I don't know. What do you want to say to him? I just want him to stop because I don't want nobody to get hurt. Are you afraid of him? What times are you afraid of him? When he's really drunk. And how often is that? All the time. I'm going to talk to your fiance. I'm going to ask you to leave the stage, and I'm going to bring you back out. You want all of us to leave? No, you, you, you stay. I want you, I want you to talk to her, because you're the ones watching what your brother's doing to her. Let's bring Cher out. You okay? Please don't cry. How you feeling? We love you. We didn't want to put you through all of this, but like, we just want him to change because we see how you love him. And you deserve better than that, Cher. You know you do. I love you. <laughs> That's why we want him to change, because we understand that you love him, and we do too. You deserve better than that. You shouldn't. Y'all got to think about that baby, though. Like, really, it's that baby. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like you girls to also leave the stage for a few minutes. I'd like to talk to Cheryl about myself. You know, I'm, I'm up here and I, I meet these two young ladies and the 14 year old seems like she's smarter than everybody up here. It's real simple, she gets it. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I tried drugs, I joined the gang, but I realized it was bad, I stopped. And I, I meet your boyfriend and, and I do see like, I could see where he, Sometimes you just look at somebody and go, they're a bad guy. But I can almost see that there's something good about Cameron. There's something that he's not just a total thug. But to hear the stories of him, you know, the, the window breaking, you have to run from him. You fall down. You, you're falling on your baby. Yeah. The abuse while you're pregnant. I understand that you guys were young. You've been together a long time. You're only 22. He's 19. You've been together for eight years. You guys were children when you first got together. But you see, you see this behavior. His sisters obviously are here to protect you. Yeah. They don't like the way he treats you. Why wouldn't you say, you know what, especially after you have a beautiful little girl and now you're pregnant with a little boy, when, did, when does it end? When does this, when you say, you know what, Cameron, I can't, I, you can never have me ever again. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Well, why do you stay? Can you give me an answer to that? He's a really good guy. He really is. Underneath all that, he's a good guy, and I love him. When does he show the good guy? I mean, he's shown that uh, somewhat you could see where there's a good guy in it now because he's sober. But according to his sisters, according to him himself, he gets drunk a lot. Yeah, he and does. if you say anything to him while he's drunk, he, he's gonna lay, he's gonna bring the lumber down on you. Yeah. Doesn't that make you scared? Yeah. You, you gotta be. It can't be healthy for your baby being scared all the time. No, it's not. 
Isn't it fair to your child that you live your life being with somebody that's not, you don't have to live your life in fear? Yeah. But I love them. I know you lo- I know I know. <laughs> I know you love them, but at some point where do you say, "You know what? I love you, but I can't be with you." He just needs a little help. Do you think he's willing to help himself? Yeah. And what makes you think that? Because I know. If he has help, he'll be all right. Could it be that you're in love with somebody that you knew years ago and now he's not the same guy anymore? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what it is, right? Yeah, it is. I can't imagine he was that way four years ago, five <laughs> years ago. No. He has gotten a lot worse. And how, how has he got worse? I mean, his drinking has gotten a lot worse. I mean, he's always out. Doesn't come home. His, it just, it, it, it just, it's so strange to hear. He's, it's not like we're talking about, you know, a forty-year-old man here. We're talking about a nineteen-year-old. His drinking's got worse. He's nineteen years old. Are you afraid of him? At times. And what times are you afraid of him? When he's really drunk. And how often is that? Uh, all the time. I think everybody in the audience, everybody watch at home, they're rooting for you. Yeah, say, you, say you take the damn help. That's what everybody's saying. That's what I'm thinking. Take the damn help. And it wouldn't be right and it wouldn't be good if, if you weren't pregnant and you said you wanted to stay with them. But that's your life, and if you wanted to live it that way, and if nobody could stop you, then then you live your life. But you don't even get the the, the luxury of thinking that way because now you have to think about your children. What if he gets so drunk and he, you know, does something that you're not going to be around anymore? You did you honestly the way you what you know and the way you feel and what you, what you, what's in your gut? Are you going to be okay not being around and and having Cameron take care of your little ones? No. It's kind of hard to take care of kids when you're drunk, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> or when you're walking around, you have to carry a, a firearm on you because you don't feel safe. You got people coming after you. It can't be um, a, a settling feeling for you when you, you and the man you're with has to strap a gun onto his side to protect himself. Yeah, he's always been like that. I mean, aren't you a mother first yeah. before anything else? Yeah. This is the guy that you want to be daddy, that your kids are going to see, your daughter, your son. This is their father, and he's going to act this way, and he's going to treat you, his sisters, other women. He's going to treat them like this? Are you going to be okay with your little girl, your little boy seeing him act this way? What do you what do you want? I just want him to get some help. Did you ever tell him to this before? Have you ever said this to him? Why not? I don't, I wouldn't think he would listen. Do you want to tell him now? I mean, it's your life that we're talking about here. I think if you you really, if you love him and you want things to change, then you got to tell him he's got to change. I'm gonna bring him out. You don't have to be scared. This is your opportunity to tell him whatever you need to tell him. Just let's bring him out. Let's bring Cameron back out. What do you want to say to him? You know, I love you. With all my heart. I want you to be around for our kid. I really do. So do you think if we went and got help, 
Would it make it better? You don't know. I mean, see, we try to work things out. You know that. So no. You said I want to work things out. So is it a yes to get help? How can, any, how can anybody, I don't understand, how can somebody help? Huh? I mean, I mean look how long this, look how long this went on. I mean, I, I've tried to pull out. I've tried to pull out lots of times. It's like every time I pull out, it don't work. Well, that's maybe why you need help. <laughs> that there's nothing wrong with accepting help. There's nothing wrong if somebody, you, first of all, looking at a beautiful young girl that no matter, with everything that you put her through, she still loves you and wants to stay with you. She's willing to, she sees the good side of you. You are the father of her children, and she's sitting there saying, I love the guy, I want him to get help. He could be a good guy, he needs help. I think you're an incredible lucky man to have such a beautiful woman to stand by your side, even through everything you put her through. And I say, there's nothing wrong with taking help. We'll give you help, but you got to make a commitment. You got to make a commitment to the, to the woman, to your unborn child, to your daughter. Yeah, I'm going to get help. Whatever I need to do to be a, a better father, a better husband, that I'll get that help. If, it, if it's alcohol counseling, going to AA, if it's anger management, if it's get you a GED so you can get a decent job so you can support your family. You know, what the hell, man? I, I want to help you. I don't want to send you out back in the street so you can be a thug and sell more drugs, be a menace to society. No. The whole point of the show is to turn a guy like you around. And I think you can turn around. So let's, let's take the guy off the street and make him a productive member of the neighborhood, of the society. You got 200 people applauding you right now. They ain't booing you. They ain't hoping you go to jail. I think everybody in the audience, everybody watching at home, they're rooting for you. Yeah, say, you, say you take the damn help. That's what everybody's saying. That's what I'm thinking. Take the damn help. Because... If those people can't trust you, if those people can't respect you, if those people have to be afraid of you, you got nothing. You got nothing in this world. If your children, if the woman you love, if they're afraid of you, if, if you're a, a terrible role model, if you're giving your kids no chance to grow up and say, that's my dad and I'm proud of him, then you failed at everything. Again, Cameron, you're right. You didn't, weren't born with a silver spoon. Not too many people are, really. But at this point, you're getting a great opportunity. You got a woman that's standing by you, and she's saying, let's get some help. And I'm here. I'm telling you, here's the help. Not that there's nothing wrong. There's nothing to be embarrassed or ashamed. I need help. There's times when I'm on my knees, and I need somebody to help me get up. It's just that way in life. Some t everybody needs help. Nobody's Superman. Nobody. So for the woman that you 
throwing the precious joy of life to you and you got another one on the way, I think you could look her in the eyes and say, yeah, I'll go get help. But only if you really want to. It's got to come from you. Can't be me telling you. You say whatever you want to her. And then whenever you say, you could either walk off the stage and go get help or you could walk off and go live the thug life. Do we want to get help? Then let me help you up, and let's go get you some help. You know I love kids. I'm great with kids. You seriously think I would do something that bad? You know who abuses three-year-old girls? Monsters. Do your time! Ah! Slow down. I'm mad. I want to know answers. You better hope God you pass this test. Did your daughter tell you that Chad touched her? She has. She said that he, he touched her, but never hurt her. I was there. Yeah, she were there, and you heard her say Chad touched her. Somebody was putting words in her mouth. It didn't come out of my mouth. It came out of my granddaughter's mouth. I do believe you put it in her head 100%. You guys have the best tests in the nation, and that's why we're here today. I know for a fact that I did not touch that little girl. I'm going to prove my damn innocence of your guilt. Well, this is the moment of truth. Let's find out. Samantha believes that her three-year-old daughter was molested by her ex-boyfriend's brother, Chad. But he denies sexually abusing the child and even took a voice stress test to prove his innocence. Well, Chad failed that test. And now we emailed my show to help clear his name. Take a look. My little girl didn't deserve this. No little girl does. A couple months ago, my three-year-old daughter told me that Uncle Chad touches me. Uncle Chad is Andrew's brother. Andrew and I went out for about two years. I first heard from the molestation from my stepmother, Connie. My daughter was staying the night down at my father's house, Jerry, and they were giving her a bath, and she had told Connie, my stepmother, that Chad, Chad has touched, touched her. When my granddaughter ran up to me and told me that, I was, I was hurt and scared for her, and I wanted to get to the bottom of it as soon as possible. We called her mother right away and got her to the house, and then we took a, her to the hospital. And they said there wasn't enough evidence to prove that she was or wasn't molested. I feel at fault in a sense because I finished her bath before we got her to the hospital, and I'm afraid that with doing that, that it took some of the evidence away. And I assumed that that's probably why they dropped the case. After all this came out, we got a hold of authorities and he took a voice stress test and he failed it. He failed the question where he said it hasn't touched her at all, but they didn't know if he did it for his own sexual gratification. So they're gonna drop the case because they can't prove that he did the criminal act. Andrew and Chad are saying that I coached her, but I don't even really know Chad. I met him in passing, and Andrew's family just in passing. I mean, I don't know any of them. It's driving a wedge between Connie and I because she's being accused of coaching my granddaughter, but I know that she didn't. This is a very serious accusation, and I'm very angry. I want to get it resolved. I want to prove my innocence, and possibly somebody's guilt. I don't take child molestation lightly. I, I don't think anybody should just make something like that up, or would. No reason to make anything like that up. I can't believe that Andrew's taking his brother's side over a little girl that he considers his daughter. 
I just want it to be resolved. I'm going to take all the legal actions I can to get him put away. I want answers, and if he did, I want, I want to know why. Chad, you're here today because you're being accused of molesting a three-year-old girl. Yes, sir. You need to stand up. Um, <clears throat> how, how, do you, how do you know this child? It was my, uh, my brother's ex-girlfriend's child. Right. And <clears throat> why do you believe that you're being accused of this? That I have no idea. I was minding my own business. Some stuff got started on Facebook when my brother was seeing Samantha. And she was saying stuff rude about my mom. Of course, I'm going to stand up for my mom. And after all that had been said and done, everything was fine for a couple months. And all of a sudden, I hear that I'm being accused of molesting this little girl. I'm like, are you serious here? And you think that's why you're being accused? Because some stuff was being said over Facebook. You defend your mom and you think that maybe... I, I wouldn't put it past them, to be honest with <clears> you. <throat> How did you find out that you were being accused? I was at work... Uh, Children's Services knocked on my door. I got a phone call. So I called Children's Services right back. I said, you know, let's set up a date. I will meet, meet with you at my work. So we met, and then I said, I said, I'll go take a lie detector test. I want my name cleared off of this. I'm not one of them six sons of bitches out there that will that, that do that stuff. It's nasty. You know, I don't even go so far as to change a diaper. Like, even if I was, me and my girlfriend was, Babysitting a child. I so you do it. you offered to take a lie detector test. Yes, sir. And what happened? It was a voice stress test. I had just woke up, didn't have nothing in my system or nothing, and of course I'm going to be stressed out because the stupid accusations. So I took it, and then they said there was some hesitation in it, which said I had failed. Immediately, I had went to my mom's house where she had internet, and I emailed a show here. Because After I, you failed the stress test? Yes. Who gave you that stress test? It was a deputy down there where I'm from. law enforcement? Yeah. Okay. So you failed the stress test, and then you got home and you said, I'm going to contact the show and take a lie detector. Yeah, you I want to take, take it further. I want my name off of this because I'm not that kind of person. When you were told that you failed the stress test, how, what did you think? I was like, are you serious right now? You know, I didn't do nothing. So this test has got to be bogus. You believe that the child's being coached? Yes. By who? By Connie. Why do you think Connie's coached? She, she says on tape, she doesn't even know you. Why would she want you to get in trouble? She doesn't know me, but I guess Andrew and Connie had had lunch together, and she kept prying at him, asking him questions. Where do you live? You know, this, that, and the other. And then next Now, uh, your brother's not the biological father of the Correct. girl. But he dated Samantha... And he kind of was like the dad, right? Right, because the child's dad was not in her life. Wouldn't it have been easier for Connie, if she's going to make this up, to pin it on your brother? You would think. Right. I mean, she, does she know you at all? I've not really. I've met her. I've seen her twice. You know, once was when Sam and Andrew was living together. I was moving a dresser for them. And uh, then the second time was at a birthday party. So you, you were around the little girl, though, right? Yes, but I was never alone with her. Who was with you? Andrew, family members. I mean, anybody that could be there was there. And what would be Connie's reasoning to accuse you of child molestation? I have no idea. That's another reason I'm here. Did you coach the little girl to no, say this? No, I did. Could this be a, an act? I would believe it is, because my story is nothing but true. Did your daughter tell you that Chad touched her? She has. She said that he touched her, but never hurt her. I was there. Did you coach the little girl to no, say this? No, I didn't. Could this be an act? I would believe it is, because my story is nothing but true. Let's bring out Connie. My granddaughter. She has no reason to lie to me. Well, I, I you have no reason to coach her on how to do this stuff. I know you don't. That's why my name needs to stay out of your mouth. 
It didn't come out of my mouth. It came out of my granddaughter's mouth. It came out of your mouth first to coach her. No, it didn't. And I'm going to prove that today. I'm going to prove my damn innocence and your guilt, probably. All right. And you well, also see, took a lie detector yes, test, sir, right? Yes, sir, I did. Did you coach the little girl to no, say this? No, Steve, I didn't. I, I mean, and, and I believe you because only... Uh, it, the story doesn't make a lot of sense because you don't even know him. No. Is there, uh, do you have any uh, bad feelings towards his brother? No. I, I liked his family. You liked them? Yes. What happened the night that brought this all to a head? My granddaughter come to stay the weekend. She stays weekend at her papa's house, and I live there also as a couple. I was getting ready to give her a bath. I had her water draw, getting ready to put her into the tub. And she says, Mama, my tutu hurts. I said, can I see? She said, well, let me look. So I picked her up on my lap. And I said, honey, I said, you can tell Grandma anything. I said, is anybody messing with you? She says, Daddy's mean to me. And Jed touches my tutu. She said what? Daddy, Daddy's mean to me, and Chad touches my tutu. Daddy's mean to me, and Chad touches her private spot. Yes. And I said, okay, honey. I says, I put her in, down, and I says, Grandma's going to go get a cigarette because I wanted to go get her grandfather. By the time I got to the dining room door, she come running past me, dripping wet, and cuddled up beside the computer chair where her grandfather was and dropped her head and says, Papa, Daddy's mean to me. Chad touches my tutu. So we called her mother and took her to the hospital. And this is where this all began. And what happened at the hospital? They found irritation, but they did not find no tears and could not prove that it was sexually molestation of any sort. But you believe that I she's believe been molested. Her. She's a smart little girl. Now, just as you're standing on stage like I am, she doesn't know you. Very emotional. Could this be a, an act? I would believe it is. You believe this is an act? Because my story is nothing but true. Okay. Your brother also believes, Connie. Uh, Andrew believes that you fabricated this story also. Let's bring him up. Hello. How are you doing, Andrew? Good. How about you? you uh, I'm doing well. You dated her stepdaughter. Correct. And uh, did you have any children together with her? Uh, yes, one. But are you the biological father? Of the one, yes. Of the one. But not of the child you're being, uh, your brother's being accused of blasting. Right. Okay. Um, do you really believe she's fabricating the story? I do. I do believe you put it in her head, 100%. No, I didn't. 100%, I believe well, you put why, it in her why head. Why do you believe she today. did that? Why do I believe she did that? Because... Pretty much ever since I've known Sam, she's even told me that uh, Connie's been wanting to well, sorry, uh, for herself um, and basically acts like she's her own mother. And so she's making up the story so that she can uh, gain access to the child? Right. You know I love kids. I'm great with kids. You seriously think I would do something that bad? Dear Dad! Ah! Hold on. I'm mad. I want to know answers. You better hope God you pass this test. You know I love kids. I'm great with kids. Do you seriously think I would do something that bad? And so she's making up this story so that she can uh, gain access to the child? Right. To but pull her she, away from me more but because it, but I still get she her. Blame wouldn't you blame her own stepdaughter then? Because if the daughter's got custody. How is, the, how is she going to gain custody by blaming him? Just to get her away from me. Um, because I still do get on the weekends when I get my son. So you're saying she, you, she doesn't want to give the baby to you. She's trying to stop that from... Right. The, not the baby, but the three-year-old. Right. To go on to. What about the fact that your brother has failed the stress test by law enforcement uh, when they gave him... Um, my mom had friends that took the same exact stress test, and they failed their own names. So I think it's a bogus test. Yeah, is that where you got that I took a test? Hold on a second. My own... your, your friends have told your mom? Yeah, we've, uh, we've had people that they failed on their own names. My mom's friends told her that, yeah. Did they prove any paperwork that this was the case? I don't know just, if they did or not. Well, this is just people saying things. Right. 
Okay. So that really not a lot of uh, hard evidence that that's the case, right? Right. I can't uh, believe that a law enforcement agency is giving stress tests and people are famed for their own name. I just I think the test is bogus, and that's why we're here today. Okay. What about this test that you took today? Do you think it's bogus or do you think it's the real deal? No, I think it's the real deal because okay. you guys have pretty much the best tests in the nation. I would think so. Do you believe that uh, the daughter never said this? Do you believe this little girl never said that she was touched in a sexual manner? I do believe that. You heard the tape from Children's Hospital. I was there. Did. Yes, you were there, and you heard her own mouth say Chad touched her. Never in a, never in a, un, oh, the paperwork's unwind. here, dear. That's fine. Yes. So the child, you did hear the child say that your brother touched her? She said that he, he touched her, um, but never hurt her in any kind of way. Um, but if he touched her in a sexual manner, that's abusing her, wouldn't it? Right. That, I mean, yeah, it, it would hurt her. If your brother did fail the lie detector test, how would you uh, react about this? I'd be blown off my feet, and I'd honestly beat his ass. Okay. Well, that probably wouldn't be the best thing you. to do. Well, we're not going to have any beating of ass, but <laughs> I would hope that uh, you would take legal action against your brother or right. cooperate at the very least. Um, your stepdaughter's here. Your ex, Samantha, let's bring her out. I want to know why, of all people, why she would say you, of all people. Because somebody was putting words in her mouth. Why would you, you be You don't even know up? what was really said. Because I was you called were, as soon as it happened. You were called. Okay. And you even agreed with me that Connie had probably coached her with it. And you even told me later on that came up to you and said, Mama Connie told me to say and that. And I told Connie that. Okay. Why okay. say that to you? Okay, what, like, what she, my daughter said to me was that Mama Connie said that Chad is bad because, she touched, because he touched her. That's not what you told me. That is what I told no, you. No, you told me, told me, told you that Mama Connie told her to say that. Do you believe, I, uh, exactly what do you, you told believe me. that your daughter was touched by somebody? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that Chad did it? That's, I want to believe my daughter. And you, did your daughter tell you that Chad touched her? She has. After she has told everybody else, she did not tell me at first. But, you know, I try to keep an open mind about stories when I'm listening to them. This story doesn't make any sense. Because usually, and we do these stories all the time, it's usually somebody that there would be a reason to accuse them of. Uh, you know, there is... But he has no custody of this child. No. He, there's nothing to gain by blaming him. I don't, and you say it's because she doesn't, I, but then they would blame you. That'd be the most uh, obvious. So all I'm saying is I don't like the fact that it's him because he really has no connection. I believe that the You reason... have taken your daughter around your brother, right? Correct. And you oh, guys definitely. were alone or, you know, they're not there. Right. Right. You have custody or visitation and you take the daughter. I, I don't have visitation. Um, she's not my... Kid, I, I don't want to use words that, but... You take the daughter and you spend the weekend right. away from the mom, right. away from Connie. Right. Okay. Your granddaughter says that she was touched by Chad. She told me, she said, Daddy's mean to me and Chad touched my tutu. I know for a fact that I did not touch that little girl. Well, this is the moment of truth. Let's find out. She told me, she said, Daddy's mean to me, and Chad touches my tutu. You dated Andrew, but you must know Chad. Yes. You think he's capable of something like that? I mean, that's a hard question. I mean, anybody's capable, but, I mean, he's around kids all the time, and I never would have thought that, any, that he would do anything to harm her. Now, your daughter looks at Andrew like a father, right? How does it make you feel that he's defending his brother? It hurts because that's supposed to be our little girl. <laughs> and no matter who it is, he should be on her side of all people, whether it's his brother or not. Um, <laughs> is that why after everything was done and everything, you still let me take her around my brother? 
after they you told really me, believe that after we told them after they called me and you were standing there when they talked to me saying that they were talking about dropping it because of her age and lack of evidence saying he did not do it yes i started letting her go back to you correct you were sitting and, right there i mean seriously you know i love kids i know but I you know don't, i'm no. great with kids you seriously think i would do something that bad I mean, I, I don't but see you know what, and, and I'm not, and I'm not saying you're anybody. child molester, but every child molester says that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, and again, I, and I want to clarify my statements. I'm sure Jerry Sandusky said the same thing. I'm, I'm a coach. I love kids. Why would I do that? Uh, scandal in the Boy Scouts, priests. Oh, I, well, I love children. Why would I do that? The fact of it is. There's people that they love kids and they cross the line and they sexually abuse them. Yeah, that's, that's why they do it. Um, I don't know why they do it, but yeah, it's it's horrible. <clears throat> the fact that he failed a, a stress test from a law enforcement agency, um, questioning him about your daughter. What do you think about that? Um, they said the te or Andrew and them said the test was bogus. It wasn't true, but I mean it, it's a professional test. I don't see how it couldn't be true. Well, I don't know the exact accuracy of a, a voice uh, test, but our lie detector test is like 99%. Uh, is, is that correct? Like 99%? Very close to it. 98. 98%. So I think this test, um, whatever comes out, hope, let's hope for you passes, right? Mm -hmm. um, Alexander is who? That's her bi biological, biological father, father of your daughter. Let's bring Alexander out. <laughs> so your time! Slow down, slow down, slow down. I don't know you, and I don't even like you. You don't know me because you're not even in your daughter's life until something comes up. Yeah, I'll admit it, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to step on the girl be a father. You about to be there three years ago when she was born. I was there. Yeah, okay. Is that why he you took don't her even over? Know. You don't know me. I don't know you. So then why are you I don't making even like an accusation? You. I don't care if you like me or not. You I don't know you from Adam, so test. I could give a crap less. I'll still sleep the same tonight, buddy. Um, you're the biological father of the little girl. Yes, sir. When did you find out that your little girl might, might have been molested? Last week. Last week? Yeah. And your reaction to that? I'm mad. I'm upset. Mad. Hey, hey, you, you, they said you're not really in the daughter's life. You kind of admit that you haven't been there. I think you yeah. just said that. Uh, why haven't you been in your daughter's life? I mean, like, I work a lot, and I just really haven't been there like I should be. I, I have another little boy. Um, I mean, you I'm, you I'm, have I'm, another child? Yeah. Yes, sir. And I'm in the wrong. I mean, I should be there more than I'm going to be. Maybe this incident will drive you to be there a little more for your daughter? Yeah, definitely. Who's Jerry? My father. He's your father. Yeah. Let's bring Jerry out. Okay. How you doing, Jerry? You better hope you passed it. I will. Right here. I ain't no doubt about it. Um, you better hope so. You. You too. Well, it's he's not being accused, right? I mean, the one thing is. Uh, well, he better hope his brother like didn't run in his mouth. I didn't touch on this. Your your daughter does say though that you're mean to her. Because I don't get I don't let her get away with everything, so she's not an unruly child at the age of 13 years old. Okay. All right, but you don't physically abuse her, no. spank her. She's disciplined. Absolutely not. You don't she, physically She's dis disciplined when she gets in trouble. Not physically, though, right? No. Okay. Verbally? Verbally. Okay. Um, Jerry, so you are with Connie, and yes, when sir. you were telling the story about what, Papa? Yes. He's Papa. Yes. Okay. So you're there the day that she says that the granddaughter, or your, yeah, your granddaughter, says that she was touched by Chad. Yes, sir. Did you hear her say that? Oh, yeah. Would she she come call? right out and snuggle right up to me. I was sitting on the computer. What did she say to you? She told me, she said, Daddy's mean to me, and Chad touches my tutu. I picked her right up, and I said, What do you mean Chad touches your tutu? How does he touch you? And she says, He touches it. I shook her little hand up. He did not do this. So she's been trying to get Andrew back. He doesn't want to go back. She told me the exact same story. I know for a fact that I did not touch that little girl. Well, this is the moment of truth. Let's find out.
He did not do this. Because she's been trying to get Andrew back. He doesn't want to go back. She told me the exact same story. Do you believe she coached this little girl in any way? No. Would there be any reason why she would coach her? Exactly. That's what we're saying. Yeah, I, I, that part, I just, I, I still can't get why you would coach somebody about somebody you don't even know. I don't either. Right. When he says something about us wanting to get the getter and all this, I don't want to raise a baby. I don't either. I'm 16 years old. I'm done with that stuff. Why would I? I just want to be grandpa. I understand that, but at the same time. Don't sound like it. Why would she have her calling her Mommy Connie? Even Sam told me that. She's never had her call her Mommy Connie. I mean, names are names. That, uh, That has nothing to do with child molestation. But it also goes to show that anything can be put in a child's head. By calling a certain name? When it goes from Mama Connie to Mommy Connie, when it's been Mama Connie her whole life, But yeah. she knows who Mommy is, right? Yeah. She's not confused, is she? I mean, I don't think so, but... Okay. Uh, your mom Susan's here. Let's bring out Susan. Other side. You guys know. He did not do this. Y'all, time straight. My family. I and I've had it. Anything, Susan? I've had it. How you doing, Susan? You're Andrew and Chad's yes. mother. Um, you just said they're stirring this up. Yes. And what, what would be the point of that? Because she's been trying to get Andrew back. He doesn't want to go back. Is that Every, true? If my third child was his, yes, I asked him if he wanted to work it out for our kids. Over and over. And if he doesn't do... Do you want do, him back now? No, 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 no. 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 Okay, so that you're hurt. saying that... They're making up an accusation against Chad because Andrew won't go back to her. And to hurt him and his family. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. Why would they pick out Chad if they're trying to frame somebody? Because I'm living with Chad. Exactly. And they're wanting him to move out so in he order can get closer to, to her. It's away from me. Uh, why blame me? Why say I did something like this when I've known them for so long? They would probably feel bad. I know, we've always that's, been that's we've always little, been super proud of you. Yes, we for have. being there. For even even and after you guys split up, you always came and took her. And I, I never said nothing bad about that. I enjoyed it. I thought that is great. But we she gotta believe you. her. Uh, yes, we gotta but believe I mean, her. She comes out and tells me that. What are we supposed to do? Your I mom understand. is here, Jennifer. right? And her name is Jennifer. Jennifer, let's bring out Jennifer. Andrew, I have so much respect for you. You took my granddaughter in like she was your own. But I want you to know, she told me the exact same story. The exact same thing. Is that why even you told me that you didn't believe he did it? You're right, I didn't. But this little girl has changed so much to the point where she's doing different things with kids. She's been caught under blanket making moaning noises. Is this true? Yes. The last time she came back from this house, but... Um, like, She's showing typical signs of uh, child sexual molestation. Yes. yes. But he wasn't... Um, that I'm aware of, he stayed with... That when she came back doing that. So I didn't know if maybe she accidentally walked in. I don't know, but she wasn't... Why wouldn't that I that address the situation? She wanted to French kiss me because this Because we weren't talking weekend, after that weekend. Instead of a regular the kiss. Have that we haven't been talking. I don't believe that at all. And you know, when I was at work and we met up there, yes, we we had talked, okay, human to human. Right. You guys had said we're trying to get your name off of this and this and that. Next thing you know, I got Children's Services knocking on my door. Right. So I'm here to back myself up because I know for a fact that I did not touch that little girl. Well, and you're also here to refute the lie, uh, stress detect, uh, stress, voice stress detector, right? Yes, sir. You failed that test. Well, this is the moment of truth. Let's find out. Um, Connie, you came here, took a lie detector test, whether you coached your, you consider your granddaughter? Yes. Your granddaughter, whether she fabricated this story. Did you coach Samantha's three-year-old daughter to say that Chad touched her? You answered no. Did you fabricate a story that Chad sexually molested Samantha's daughter? You answered no. Did Samantha's three-year-old daughter tell you that Chad inappropriately touched her? You answered yes. 
Did Samantha put you up to fabricating or coaching in this allegation? You responded no. And the results for your lie detector test came back all the same, and it came back that you... Did you coach Samantha's three-year-old daughter to say that Chad touched her? You answered no. And the results for your lie detector test came back all the same, and it came back that you told the yeah. truth. Um, you're vindicated. But I don't think we needed a lie detector test to see that you're telling the truth. I can't imagine, and listen, I've had people up here crying and then they fail. Um, but your story just rings so much truth to it. I got to imagine, you know, if your granddaughter, you're giving her a bath and she says something like this, and this is like textbook how it happens, um, and you have, you don't even know Chad. No. Why would you fabricate this story? Well, when she had told me this, I... First thing out of my mouth was, who's Chad? And then I found out it was Andrew's All right, so brother. Unfortunately, you know, it would have, in a way, it would make you evil, but you didn't fabricate the story. No. You told the truth. Um, so, unfortunately, you have to open up your mind that this actually did happen, right? Right. Chad took a lie to touch the test. Okay. I don't know what the results are, but li li hear me out. Yeah. You start fighting on the stage, you start charging across the stage, somebody else is going to get hurt besides the person you want to hurt, okay? okay. I don't want that. Sorry. Uh, you don't have to apologize. If somebody did this to my child, I want to rip this place apart too. But you got to think smart, you got to be cool about it, you got to let the law enforcement officials, if, you know, he could pass okay. and everything's but. But what I'm saying, there's a lot of people on stage, a lot of women on the stage. I don't want anybody to get hurt, okay? Yes, please. Chad, you came here. You took a lie detector test because you failed a voice test. Yes, sir. You didn't like the result. You came on my show to prove that you didn't do it. Yes, sir. We asked you, did you inappropriately touch Samantha's three-year-old daughter for your own sexual gratification? You responded, no. Did you sexually molest Samantha's three-year-old daughter? You responded no. And both results came back the same. And it came back that you did not tell the truth. Test. You, you failed another test for molesting yeah. a you child. I think Sandra. it's malarkey because there's no physical it's evidence. It's not malarkey. There's no physical there's, evidence, Steve. Listen, first of all, there might be more. First of all, <laughs> with the children, it happened. Hold on, let me speak, please. A lot of times with three year olds, there's not a lot of physical evidence that a child's you abused. Go <laughs> you can't do to a child that you can do to a full grown woman, so there's not going to be a lot of physical evidence. But that doesn't mean a child's not abused. That doesn't mean why a three year old little girl would tell an adult somebody is touching her private parts. Your brother has failed two tests concerning this three year old little girl. What else do you need? that opens your mind, that your brother might be abusing a little girl. I need her to come to me and say that. You just admitted to hearing her say it, liar. I want to bring she out didn't Dan come Reba to me and Let's it. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. 
this, Rosa, Daddy, this story, you are. Hold on a second. This story didn't make a lot of sense from the beginning. Um, a lot of times when we do these stories, there's a reason why somebody's accused. They're very involved with the so child. Proud you call. Uh, there's a lot of bitter feelings. But here's a case of somebody that really is totally out of the picture and is being accused where it would gain for nobody. I There's felt no the gain. same way, Steve. Exactly. Exactly. Um, there was no reason for him to be accused as you picked up on that right away. And let me describe the voice stress analysis test that the police departments utilize. They utilize them because it's a little easier to train their officers and it's a, a less expensive process to do it. They use it as a screening tool whether to see a person should be considered a suspect or not. Um, it's about 70 to 75 percent accurate. The polygraph is 98 percent accurate. When Chad came into the polygraph room, he was leaking deception, almost like a faucet that had, uh, that had no washer left in it. Um, extremely nervous. I had to stop two charts because he wasn't able to sit still. Um, I was almost going to stop nope. the test completely if he wasn't able to sit still for the third chart, and finally he was able to calm him down. Um, I conducted three tests, and then the next day I conducted another three tests. So he, he actually failed six polygraph tests. His algorithmic score, right, so forget about my opinion, but the computer algorithm, which is utilized by the FBI, the Department of Defense, the CIA, and the Secret Service, scores him as 1% probability of being truthful. This man is evil, he's deceptive, and he's a manipulator. Go to jail or grow a set of wings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm easy on. You better have fun in prison. You better cover your. Oh, I'm saying. Okay. There's no physical evidence, so there can't be no jail. No physical Whatever. evidence. They need physical Whatever. evidence. My Irritation. question is, Andrew, you Spoken said you're like a thing. true criminal. Yeah. You know what, Chad? You wanted to run off my stage. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. You abused the little girl, and you talk like a jailhouse lawyer. There's no evidence. I think you did it. You failed two tests. Get the hell off my stage. Andrew, Andrew. Hold on. Hold on. Here. Um. I got to imagine it's very hard for you and your mom to hear Very that. Hard. Very hard. Um, and I know blood is thick, and we stand up for our family. I understand that. But I don't know if I can stand up for anybody, family or not. If they mistreat a child, a defenseless three-year-old girl, you know who abuses three-year-old girls? Monsters. Evil. And you might love your brother, and I'm sure you do, and you want to believe. But if you don't want any more tragedies to happen, you don't want any more children to be destroyed, you seriously better open both eyes and take a close look at your brother. Good luck to you. Thank you. Um, um, the hardest story always to do on this stage a child being abused. We always hope that it, it didn't happen. We want everybody to pass when they take a lie detector test. But unfortunately, children do get sexually molested. You're going to go home. And I know everybody that's up here is angry and you want vengeance. But you got a little boy at home. You all got families. You do something stupid and then you won't be there for that child. And I always make the point, if you can't be around to protect your child, then who's at fault? You are. So you be it smart, you let the law enforcement agencies do what they got to do, and you stay behind and you protect your little girl, you protect your son, and you start being there now. Yes. This show, the worst thing that happened was that she was abused. But the best thing now is that you're going to be involved in your daughter's life, right? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Um, You're going to go home. 
and whatever we can do to help with this, of course, we'd be more than willing, you know, willing to help. Thank you. Um, I hope that you get some counseling for your child, yes. if that's also something we can help with. But again, remember, be smart up here. Stay in your kid's life. Be involved every day so bad things can happen. Okay? Yes, sir. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. I hope it works out. six months old he was beaten 12 major fractures on his skull and then there was many fractures off the big fractures it caused him permanent brain damage a uh, monster did this yeah. my son is gonna be messed up for the rest of his life he was hit so hard that it caused him permanent brain damage and they told me that the injuries were so bad my little boy was going to die really danielle after 10 years, you want to blame me? You know, Tanika claims that your boyfriend might have done this to your son. She decided to go out to the bar instead of watching my little boy. How could this happen? I have no idea. When I got back to the house, he was still sleeping, knocked out in the bed. Were you drinking? No. She's lying. But I knew he was taken care of because he was. they were Obviously asleep. not. By who? By who my was... sister. Your sister told me she has no idea who watched him that night. Did you hurt this baby yourself? No. She knows something. She went to the bar. She was there for like 10 minutes. She came no, right you back. you guys need to get your story straight. No. Before the show, you did take a lie detector. Yes, test. I did. I believe she knows something. Her story wouldn't have been changing 20 times if she was. Did you do anything to this baby? No. You know, nobody's story adds up here. Somebody did something really bad to this baby. <laughs> My guest is Danielle. Danielle, why are you here? I'm here today because when my son was six months old, he um, uh, was beaten very badly. He had 12 fractures from behind the side of his ear until the other side, and then there was many fractures off the big fractures. And through that, it caused him permanent brain damage. And behind your eye, there are these nerve endings that go into your brain. They're called uh, optic nerve endings. When he was hit, he was hit so hard that those nerve endings were shattered. The doctors told me that the injuries were so bad and they sat for so long that my little boy was going to die. How could this possibly happen to uh, a little boy? I was over at my best friend's house, my son's godmother. She's been my best friend since we were in seventh grade. She was like my sister. Her family was my family. It happened the night of August 12, 2009. They tested the blood back to see what date the, happened, the, the injuries happened because they knew that they were old injuries. They came back saying the night of August 12, which was Tierra's birthday, Tanika's sister. I was in the hospital for those days from, from the 12th to the 16th. And um, I tried to get a hold of Tanika the night of the 12th. I could not get a hold of her. And so I talked to her sister the next day when I was in the hospital and... Tierra told me that, um, that she was mad because her, her sister took all of her birthday money, went out to the bar, spent all of her birthday money at the bar. She said that she had the next day on the 13th, and she said he was just throwing up, and that's all he was doing is just, you know, throwing up and crying. And uh, now uh, Tanika is trying to say that um, it wasn't her, and then, you know, she, at first she was saying that she wasn't even at the bar that night, and then... She was at the bar that night, and I would just want to and know who had my son. And she was responsible for watching her son that night? Yeah, and she decided to go out to the bar instead of watching my little boy. When she was out at the bar, who was watching him? That's what I want to find out. That's what I'm here for and today. You, She's saying she does not remember, and I don't think that that's true at all because you're not going to leave someone in your home with all she your stuff. She doesn't remember? Yes. She was in charge of a baby, and she went out drinking, and she's saying she doesn't remember who was in charge, who was in charge and watching this li your little guy? Yeah, th this was her godson. So when you got your son back, you noticed something was wrong. I took him straight wrong. to the hospital. So most... somebody did something, used force against your son and caused extreme, extreme, extreme force and, and seriously injured your son. Yes, sir. 
obviously, uh, at some point, the police must have been involved. Oh, yes. They questioned everybody. They took us in. I went in to speak with the detectives one time. They took in Tanika over five to seven times. They knew the blood results. They knew what happened with her. No one saying anything. So there was no charges filed against anybody? None. Here's a, a list of some of the stuff that your son uh, was inflicted. Twelve major fractures on his skull from left ear to right ear. From, uh, from the top of his head all the way. And this is your, your <coughs> son in the photo. Uh, permanent brain damage, permanent shunt on his brain, a catheter to release blood from his brain, a hematoma, and he has temporary blindness from destroyed nerve endings behind his, his eyes. His, his eyes are still ruined. I'm learning Braille now to teach my little boy Braille so he can read. Do you think your friend Tanika did this? No, not with a bone in my body. You don't believe she did this? I don't this. believe she did this. I believe when she went out to that bar that night, she left him with somebody. If I ever, ever suspected her of ever hurting my son, I would have never left him there with her. When he was with her, he was supposed to be with her. Do you believe that she really does know who she left her son with? She knows something because she put lie after lie after lie on top of me. I had to fight for them to reopen the case to give everybody polygraph tests. My boyfriend and I went in for polygraph tests. I was hooked up to that machine for six hours straight. He was hooked up for five hours straight, and she refused to take hers. I'm sorry. If you're being accused of something that you are 100% innocent of doing, the first thing you want to do is stand up and prove yourself innocent and say, no. <laughs> How could this happen? I have no idea. When I got back to the house, he was still sleeping, knocked out in the bed. Did you do anything to this baby? No. You know, nobody's story adds up here. Somebody did something really bad to this baby. <laughs> Knowing that at some point um, after he went to the police that you and your boyfriend um, became suspects, how did that feel? No, uh, no one can imagine, you know, you finding out your little boy's going to die because he was beaten and then they want to accuse you of it when I was crying out for help the whole time. I was trying to get help for him. They wouldn't listen to me. And it's, it, this is not something to go and said. I need to find out what happened to my boy. When he asked me, when he's older, Mommy, why can't I drive? Why can't I play football like the other kids? I will be damned if I tell him I don't know. When you found out your friend wouldn't take the lie detector test, did you confront her? No. You, you haven't said to her, hey, how come you haven't taken The detectives told me not to say a word. But you're here, I just did what they you're here today because you want to find out what happened They closed to the boy. case. They were not, they're not doing anything. And I said, I have one more chance left. I said, this is the only chance I have to get answers from my boy. And you're here today because you want answers to what happened to your son. You want to be able to... I want justice for my son. <laughs> And how is your son now? I mean... My son, my son has... They told me if... They said my little boy was going to die, but if he did survive, he would be completely blind and mentally retarded for the rest of his life. I, I do not work anymore. All I do my life, day in and day out, I have recovery appointments for my son. I have him in physical therapy. I have him in occupational therapy. I have him in speech. We were for Cincinnati Association for the Blind. That's my little boy on Trick or Treat. Um, we have early intervention specialists. We have helped me grow. I have him in swimming lessons in the evening. He's not even two yet, and uh, he tested around um, a four-year-old level. He is above average. You know, Tanika claims that your boyfriend might have done this to your son. He already took a lie detector test. We'll see what happens. We'll see what it says. I know the truth. And um, before the show, did you take a lie detector test? Yes, sir. Um, your boyfriend also did? Yes, sir. And I understand Tanika did. Um, what has your contact been with your friend Tanika since this all happened? I've tried to message her a couple times on Facebook, and, you know, she just won't even say anything about the mistress. You know, oh, I did this for you. I did this. I, you know, I helped you take care of him. You know, my family took care of you, and... 
It's never anything about Zayden. I'm not even, I don't even care what her family has or has not done for me. I want to know who had my son that it, night. It, it, did she explain at all why she went out to a bar when she was in charge of your son? No, I never got an answer. All right, well, Tanika is here. She's a, a, a lifelong friend. She was in charge of your son that night that uh, he got injured. Let's bring her out and find out what happened. Really, Danielle? Really? Yeah, After really. After 10 Tanika. years, you want to blame me? 10 years, yeah, when Tanika. I, I got the you. blood results. The really? blood results came back when and I said told the night you of August 12th. Was with him? Really? No, you he was with me. him. He You're such the world's Your greatest mom. Told me. The world's greatest mom, right? But you were somewhere always stuck up Zach's. I was I had Zayden I more than you. I went 22 days straight. I had Zayden, that baby, more than you. I want you to know what I said. Why did you go to the bar? Why? Why did you go to the bar and get a driver? No, no. Right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't drink in the bar. It was a 21 I yet. just want to know what happened right? to my son. This is, this is absolutely, no. I want to know what happened to my little boy. Me too, because I, I want justice for him just as much as you do. You know what? If you did, just then you, you, you would have taken the podcast test in the first I place. I took one test. That was the voice test. I took three. Time. I only took one. That's all he wanted from me was one test. And I gave it to him, and that was that. Never heard anything okay. else. Tadeka, you, uh, you've you known her for a long time. Yeah, 10 years. 10 years. Uh, good friends? Best friends. Best friends. She's like um, my sister. But then something very tragic happened to this uh, little boy. Right. Serious injuries were. Uh, I was there at the hospital. He's, I know. He's going to. I was there. I'm the one who said, "Let's take him to." No, the I said, "Let's take him to the hospital." Really? I took him four times. And who was with you the two times when they started saying he was just the last two? Because you were like, "Well, what's wrong with him? What's going on?" Blah blah. blah. Right. Those kinds of questions. In July, I told you there was something wrong with your baby. No, it didn't even happen in July. It happened in August July, 12th. Your baby was not right in July. Okay, I'm sure the blood results lied to me. I'm at sure some, the doctors are lying. At some point. At some okay. point. Um, they find out that he's got permanent mm -hmm. brain damage, um, major head trauma, uh, blindness, and he was in your care. Right. How, how did this happen? I have no idea. I have no oh, idea. I, I, I we left. need an idea. Okay. Hold on a second. Here, here we have a little boy, and she says, here, can you watch my son? You say yes, and the boy ends up with injuries that almost so killed him. So you could go to the bar. That almost killed him. Right. Well, I would think... And as a parent, I would demand an answer to how this happened to my son. That's what I want to know. Well, were you not in charge of, the, of her son? I had him, but it, once I have him, it's like everybody in my family has him too. That's how much no, we all No, when you have him, him, you have him. Were you drinking? No. She's lying. But I knew he was taking care of because he was, they were Obviously asleep. not. By who? By my sister. Your sister told me she has no idea who watched him that night. Did you hurt this baby yourself? No. For the show, you did take a lot of time. Yes, I did. I believe she knows something. Her story wouldn't have been changing 20 times if she wasn't. You were in charge of him. You were giving him to watch while she was in the hospital or wherever she was at. You were supposed to be watching him. Why weren't you watching him? I had to drive my mom to the bar so that she didn't get into too you much trouble at the I was her designated driver. That's what it was. She needs to find someone else that's not watching my kid then. That's not what go to it the was. bar. Listen, listen. Think about what you just said. Think, play it back in your mind. I had right. to drive my mom to the bar. That's what I did, yeah. That's what I did. That's not. That's not Mom can't drive. I'm supposed to drive her there. Maybe she could take a night off from drinking. Okay. So you drive your mom to the bar. How long were you gone? An hour, if that. An hour, if that. She's lying. And no, I'm not. There's, My sister's right there. Ask her. You went out to the bar that night and got drunk. Your sister told me you and your mother took her birthday money and said okay. you were going to make it back and never brought anything I back. I can't make any back. I wasn't working at that time. Were and you, I couldn't drink in no bar. I, I will take a lie detector test on everything I'm saying. Were you drinking? No. You didn't have any drinks? No. So you drove for a half hour because there's no other bars closer to your house. You went. It was no. a pub that was five minutes down the street, literally. Yeah, it was about 10 minutes down the road. No, five. Then why were you gone an hour? Because we were just there, having, just enjoying the music and getting away. I had so, kids on. Getting drunk. Getting drunk. So you were at the bar. You not only drove her to the bar, you went in the bar and you were listening to the music. Right. While you were supposed to be watching the baby. 
but I knew he was taken care of because he was. They were obviously asleep. not by who? By Who's, my sister. Your sister told me she has no idea who watched him that night because she went back to Granny's. Well, I have the sister, text messages, Tanika. My sister had him because Why he went he back lie? to Granny's is with your, him. Is, with your, her. is your sister in the audience? Yeah, she's sitting right there. Oh, what? I mean, why don't you come on up here if you got something to add to the story? And if your sister had that night, she needs to take a polygraph test. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Now... I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. What's your name? Tierra. Tierra. Um, the night in question, she says to you, can you watch the baby? Yeah. And you said yes. Mm -hmm. Why'd you tell me that, that you didn't know who had him that night, Tierra? Because after they came, she went to the bar. She was there for like 10 minutes. She came no, right back. you guys need to get your story straight. No, you, you, know you just need to get <laughs> She just, she, I know you're sitting right there. She went to the bar. She comes back from she, the bar, and she, then she said goes she, back to the bar. Okay, she said she well, was. Well, I, I thought you were at Granny's that night. Isn't that what she just said? After they know? come back hold from on, the bar, after being there, you're lying. I go sorry. home. Hold on. She said she was at the bar for an hour. Yes. Well, what is it, 10 minutes or an hour? She was there for an hour, but she came back one time to okay. check on the So you had the baby all this time? Yes. Was, was she drinking it all that night? No. She, you, you Can know. we do a polygraph test on her, too? Okay. Yes. Um, before the show, you took a lie detector test? Yep. Uh, you took a lie detector test? Did you take a lie detector test? Would you be willing to take a lie detector test? I guess. I <laughs> Once your sister left and she went to the bar and you were in charge of watching the baby, was there anybody else that could have done anything to this baby besides yourself? No. Nobody? No. Did you hurt this baby yourself? No. Did you pick up the baby? Did you hurt the baby? Did you throw the baby? Did you shake the baby? No. Can you offer any explanation how this baby um, suffered such damaging injuries? No. You have no explanation. When I, every time I was, when I was there, he was in my sister's bed sleeping. Did you ever right leave the baby alone? Mm, maybe to go to the bathroom. And that was it? Yeah. Was there anybody else in the house? No. Um, were you drinking or doing any kind of drugs or anything like that? No. None? No. Okay. This was, this was your birthday, right? Mm-hmm. So this was your birthday. She and was drinking that night. Okay, hold on. No, I wasn't. I was there. Thank your mom you. and your sister went to the bar, and on your birthday, you stayed home to watch her baby. Yep. And you didn't have any alcoholic beverage. No, my friend was there. I thought you said you were by yourself. <laughs> So now you have a friend there. Yeah. And so you're not alone. You have a friend there. No. I wasn't alone the whole time, but I was alone pretty okay, much. Okay, but you had a friend come over. That friend, was that friend drinking? Yeah. The very next morning, I could not get a hold of Tanika on the day of August 13th. I got a hold of her, and she said she just got the baby to, the gr to Granny's house, and she don't know what's wrong with him. He's just throwing up, and he's not acting right, and she just got him, and she doesn't know what's wrong with him. But yet she was with him the whole time. I'll take a polygraph on that, too. I'm not telling a lie to anybody. Did you see the baby throwing up? Yeah. When? The, the night on, you were watching? The next day. The next day. Yeah, when she So you had, had him the whole night? Yeah, when I left my sister's, I went to my grandparents' house. And so you watched the baby all night? Yeah, he stayed. He and had to the, stay the night with me. And then the next morning, he was throwing up? Yeah. And what did you do? I called his mom. And what happened then? She came and... We all went to the hospital. Well, I didn't go, but they went. Once you found out that this baby suffered such traumatic injuries, what was your thought? Well, what could happen? Who could have done it? And when you came home from the bar, you only gone an hour. When you mm -hmm. came back, you noticed anything wrong with the baby? He was still asleep, was just laying in my bed sleeping. So major head damage, 12 major fractures on his skull. And then multiple uh, mini the, fractures the, off the multiple mini Multiple mini fractures. The baby's blind, and the baby didn't cry at all? No. No, didn't cry at all. 
before the show, you did take a life test. Yes, I did. I believe she knows something. Her story wouldn't have been changing 20 times if she wasn't. Did you do anything to this baby? No. You know, nobody's story adds up here. Somebody did something really bad to this baby. <laughs> Are you willing to go take your lie detector test now? That's fine. Okay, go right back there. <laughs> Somebody's watching the baby. Ba baby suffers, you know, major, major head fractures, minor head fractures. The baby's blind, and the baby never cried. He never cried. He was. When I got back to the house, he was still sleeping, knocked out in the bed. Yeah, he probably was knocked out. Not like knocked out like that. Do you think it was, do you think it was, you know, irresponsible for you to leave and go to a bar while you were supposed to be watching a baby? It was. I should have stayed at home. I, 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 I went and analyzed myself. I should have stayed at home with him, knowing that I cared for that baby just like she and does. my son is going to be really, like, like, messed up for the rest of his life. You don't think I understand that? Really? Because I miss that baby just, just as much as everything. You will never see him again. <laughs> never. You've got no godson anymore. You f*** that up. Not really. You said you think her boyfriend had something to do with this, right? He wasn't even near that day. Why do you think her boyfriend had something to do with it? I think because Zach, when we was in school, Zach didn't like black people. Now you're with somebody who has a mixed son. He has two children that, that are mixed. Sense. And then on top of that, for example, one night that I went to her house, Zach's laying beside the baby. He doesn't even hear him crying, but I do. Let's say he does have a problem with people of color, right? Let's say that's true. Say he's, he's racist. Do we really, are we really going to say he's like, oh, this little black baby, I'm going to shake it around? And he don't judge people by skin. He judges people by character. Hmm, I mean, it's first. possible. That's the first. I mean, you know what? I guess it's possible. You're right. He could say, you know, I hate black people. I hate that she, uh, I guess you had a, a baby with an African-American man. Before I met him, yes. Before you met him, but now you got with him. Maybe it's true. Maybe he doesn't if like If it was such an issue, he would have got with me in the first place. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you honestly not know anything? Honestly. Anything that happened I to this baby? I honestly do not know what happened to my godson. If you I have did, a godson. I'd be somewhere in prison my damn son. <laughs> Could your sister have done something to this little boy? No, she doesn't have it in her heart. She doesn't have it in her heart. When the police asked you to take a lie detector test, why did you refuse? Never was asked. I took a voice analyst test. That. That's not Prove it to me. Because I talked to that woman I got on one the time. I need sister got on interviewed stage. twice. That was it. Before the show, you did take a lie detector yes, test. Yes, I did. Okay. Your boyfriend, Zach, is here. Yes. You believe he has something to do with it. Let's bring him up. First of all, you didn't even know me in school. I did? No, you didn't. Really? You were in her grade. I was exactly. in a grade lower. I never I hung out with you. I, didn't even I got two school, little really? boys that call me dad that are black. Oh, that's Okay? Good. So the racist card is gone. If anybody's racist, it's you. He's half white, too. Okay, and my yeah. aunt's white. Get your story straight. My story is straight. Your story straight. Is right. that, I've been sitting backstage listening to everything you say. You just my lied like straight. 20 times. Really? Yeah. I caught the show and like three saw, times text messages, okay? She did text Danielle and say, oh, I she left. And, and she doesn't, I and she doesn't all, all know. All the papers I okay? and right. Zach, you, um, I got, I'm going to ask you straight out, did you do anything to this baby? No. So you didn't shake the baby, you didn't hurt the baby, you did not harm this baby. He's the best and father what, in the world. Let him answer. <laughs> so you didn't have anything to do with harming of this child? No. Do you believe that Tanika had something to do with this? I believe she knows something. She's hiding something. Her story wouldn't have been changing 20 times if she wasn't hiding Let alone for the last 14 months. My story hasn't changed at all. My story hasn't changed at all. That doesn't make sense. At all. Now, the police 
You had you take a lie detector test, right? Yes. The police had you take a lie detector test. We took two, two each before and we got I, here. And I assume that you passed both of them? Yes. yes. Um, and you're saying the police didn't offer you one? I took one test, and that was the voice analyst test. And that which you it. failed miserably. I have the results for that as well. That's news to me. I didn't fail that one. Why, why wouldn't the police offer you a lie detector test? I talked test? to that lady one time. One time that I, well, one time I went down there and took a test, me and my other family member, and that was it. You should have um, went down there by yourself with else. these accusations to prove yourself. Never heard it. Do you not bear some responsibility to what happened to this boy? I feel responsible that I left my house, and I left my sister and her friend there with him. I feel responsible for not staying there. I do. But... Like I said, when I got back home... If you would have stayed there and done what you were supposed to do, would these injuries have happened to that little boy? Probably not. Well, then you're responsible. Yes. Thank you. Did you abuse Danielle's son? You answered no. And the results for your lie detector test is that... <laughs>
Well, you just you deny it until still you're still still yeah, you don't you're know you're still going whatever about whatever everything. whatever. Fourteen months later, because if I knew Danielle, I would have been right there like, hey, this is what happened. I would have brought it to your attention if I noticed there's something there was something wrong with him. Or you would keep trying to cover it. That's why we're standing here now. No. What's coming for what? What's coming for what? That doesn't make no sense. So thank you. You took a lie detector test before the show, and you were asked. Do you know for sure who caused those injuries to Danielle's son? You answered no. Have you ever hit Danielle's son? You answered no. Did you cause any of Danielle's son's injuries in August of 2009? You answered no. Did you abuse Danielle's son? You answered no. And the results for your lie detector test is that you Did you cause any of Danielle's son's injuries in August of 2009? You answered no. And the results for your lie detector test is that you did not tell the truth. On what? On what question? That's what I want to hear. You tell me if I'm wrong. You went out that night because it was somebody's birthday, and I don't give a damn whose birthday it was, but you did go to a bar, and you weren't just listening to music, and you had some drinks, and you got intoxicated. Yes, I, I don't need a lie detector test to tell me that you're not telling the truth. You went to the bar, and you had drinks, and you came home, and maybe that baby was crying a little bit too much, oh, no, and you I've wanted never, to go to sleep, my body and maybe baby. when you picked up that no. baby and started shaking that baby, no, never. and maybe that baby made you mad. Nope. And maybe you caused injuries to that nope. baby. Maybe that's why your sister doesn't want to answer. Nope. Maybe she doesn't want to admit to who's in the house. No. Nope. And you couldn't get even your story straight oh, for five minutes up here. No. And I think you did cause I don't. harm to that baby. I don't. I don't. You know what? Nobody. Nobody. Not a bone in my body that would hurt you, you know what? You know, I you know what? That. You know what? When you're drunk, you'll do a lot of things. No. And nobody's believing that story. Nobody, nobody is going to listen to that story and believe, oh, yeah, you just drove mom to the bar. You were listening to music and you came back. Yeah, we believe that. No, I don't believe that. That's not the way it went down. You know that's not the way it went down. But if you need to do that to keep proving to get everybody away from you so you don't have to pay the price for what you did to a little baby, then you keep singing that song. You got some answers now. There's no way somebody fails every damn question on the lie detector test. Are you going to tell this woman the truth? Something what happened? You know I, something. I don't. You know something. Answer. You know something. If more I knew what something, I would have, you know, I don't know what happened to him that night. I would never, there's not a bone in my body that would hurt a child. Will you admit that ever. you were drinking that night? I was not drinking. Will you admit I can't that you drink were drinking? I can't drink in a bar that I am not over you, the age. Oh, please. You think you're getting drunk in that bar all the time? Not in the pub. You're a liar. Knowing that either her or her sister had something to do with the injuries of your son, what do you want to say to her? I want to beat her ass, but the reason we're here is because of violence. It needs to stop now. It needs to stop no matter how angry I feel. I feel like I'm about to throw up right now. Like, everything this like feels like it's not real right now. Like, I just want to take her and, and smash her head in the ground 12 times. With her. Two wrongs don't make a right, and I know I'm right. You know, you're a cold person. As simple as that. And what you did or what you are covering up for your sister or for you, I don't know what you're doing. But you know what? Maybe, maybe you don't pay a price here. Maybe you pay a price when you get back home. Maybe you pay a price after you pass away. I hope that day comes. That baby deserved justice. You can get the hell off my stage. <laughs> Your little boy suffered serious injuries. Yes, sir. And I hope that somehow, some way, that 
justice is done for We're your son. We're going straight to the detective's I office hope. as soon as we get off the plane. And you I better believe. <laughs> I hope whoever did this is brought to justice. I hope you get that someday for yourself and for your son. I know that you are a wonderful mother. I know that you're doing. Sister, what? Failed recovery. Um, Tanika's sister failed. She just, we got the results back from the lab. I'm sure no one here is surprised. I'm she not. failed the light detector test as far as covering up for what she knows about what happened to your son. And they want to say they care so much. Like, if you guys cared, you would be on my side. You'd be helping. You'd be fighting for my little boy. <laughs> Whatever we can do to help, we will give you copies of this lie detector results. Thank you so much. Please go back, contact the authorities. We will, I will. We will cooperate in any way that we can. I wish you all the luck in the world. I thank you and your staff for everything you've done for my family. You helped put this dead murder rest for us. Thank you. Thank you for everything. You're a wonderful person. I'm not saying you did. I'm saying you're covering that makes you just as guilty, I do not bitch. know what happened You can burn in hell. Sierra, you came back and you took a lie detector test and you came back and you passed the question whether you abused the baby or not and you passed. It, you said you didn't and you passed that. But as far as covering for your sister, you failed. You failed as far as your sister coming home and being under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Now, um, you weren't in the studio when I confronted your sister and I don't think anybody listening to that story in the right mind would ever believe that your sister went to the bar with your mom and didn't drink. Right. It's not believable. Yeah. Okay. And I understand about being loyal to family and sticking to family and trying to protect family. But you also got to remember, this is a little boy that really got abused by somebody. Right. And suffering life, lifelong damage. When your sister took her lie detector test, she failed for everything. She failed about abusing, hitting, you know, she failed everything. And I would think this is your, your chance to, and I know you love your sister, and I think speaking up the truth is not speaking up against your sister. It's speaking up for that little boy. I, I honestly don't know what happened. I really just don't know if she did it or not. I wasn't always with her 24-7, but I was there. But I don't, I don't okay. remember. I think you're covering for your sister out of loyalty to family. And I can understand that. But what I can't understand is that this little boy is going to go through this for the rest of his life, being blind. And that's not fair. That's not fair. And she, and she doesn't have definite answers. And I think your sister went out drinking. I think she came home, and this is just me. This is my opinion. This is what I think right. happened. And I think she had you watch, and then she came home, and for whatever reason, that baby got fussy, cried, whatever. And I think your sister shook that baby or threw that baby down and caused serious injuries to that baby. That's what I think happened. And I think that you were there when your sister came home. I think you know your sister came home and had been drinking. And after that, maybe you don't know what happened. I but you know, you know, your sister came home and had been drinking. I told the guy, whoever I was with, I told him that we had taken a few birthday shots, and that's. And then they all left, and me and my friend was there. And then when they came back, I was there for about forty-five minutes, and then her friend had taken me home. Really, you covered for her? What? What? Why would you I say that you been? This is what I'm telling you. Why are you lying? Why did you fail? What did I fail? I passed. You failed every single question. It just said that you failed. You didn't even. He just told me she, listen, I did not listen. abuse your son. Thank she you. Passed. I'm not saying you did. I'm saying you're covering that makes you just as guilty. I do not bitch. know what happened. You can to burn in hell. Okay, you can think whatever you want, but I swear on the. I'm not saying that you know. Was, you can swear up and down. The truth is the son. truth. Okay. He's not gonna be able to do nothing. I am never gonna be able to do anything. Whoever you're covering for or your sister. That makes you just as guilty because you're letting it be okay. They took everything from him. Hold on. Everything. Hold on one second. I think this is a tough situation, especially 
I think you know your sister came in a state of intoxication home. I think at that point you might have left. I think somewhere down the road you might know something about what your sister did. And I would hope, maybe not now, none under the glare of TV cameras and, and Danielle and her boyfriend being right here, but maybe when you leave and you have some time to think and think about her son, Oops. And if there is, you can any, make this better. You can if help us. If there's I, any, know, I'm, I don't if there's know what anything, happened. And if really. there's anything you know, or maybe you could talk to your sister, because, in all fairness, fairness for that little boy, there's people should speak up. And exactly. People, people well, should say. But if it happened happen. to your nephew, what if it would have been him? Right. That's what I'm saying. He's like my nephew. I you know. already know. Think about it. Go home. Talk to your sister. And see if we can get answers for that little boy and for Danielle, okay? Mostly for my little boy. The thought of my daughter being locked in the basement infuriates me. Dwayne did not lock my daughter in the basement. We're talking about a three-year-old. She told me on the phone. He put me in basement with spiders. I have never locked that child in the bank. She said, Wayne, give me pop pow. She's sure. saying that she got hit. How are you going to accuse my man? Stop. He's more okay, of a father than you uh, are. Okay. I'm the good guy. I would never hurt that child. Yeah, she's my daughter. daughter. That's all she's my daughter. daughter. Here recently, we got together, and all of a sudden, all this comes up. I'm simply here to defend myself. You took a lie detector test, right? Yeah. Michael, you took a lie detector test. Yes, I did. We know what's going to happen. I'm going to whoop his face in. He was a trucker. Yo, boss. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the most deceptive persons that I've ever interviewed and polygraphed. He is a wolf in sheep's clothes. If somebody's mad and they got something to say, come on and say it to my face! Steve, a couple weeks ago I spoke to my daughter. She told me that her mom's boyfriend had hit her because of the fact that she had wet his bed. She also told me that she was locked in the basement. The thought of my daughter being locked in the basement and knowing that she's only three years old, scared and petrified there by herself, infuriates me. I also was told by my daughter that her mother has been hit. If this is the environment that she's in, I need to remove her out of there as quickly as possible. It pisses me off to know that when I try to get to the bottom of the situation that her mom, you know, called our daughter a liar. She automatically just took his side, but I do believe my daughter. My daughter's a daddy's girl. She would definitely not tell me this unless she was in trouble. When it comes to my daughter, I mean, I'm her superhero. I mean, for the moment I walk in the room, she's running right to her father. Most of all, though, I, I really miss hearing her voice, holding her. Steve, I really need your help before this gets out of control. All I'm trying to do is protect my little girl. All right, Dwayne, um, there's a man on that tape who's kind of mad at you, right? Sounds like he's talking about you. That's true. What he's saying about his daughter, is any of that true? None of that is true. None of it's None young of spanker? It at all. No. Okay. What about locking uh, the three-year-old into the basement? She at no time in my house is unsupervised unless she's in her room, which I gave her my so, room. So, but that's not really answering the question. I'm asking you. No, I did not. Did you ever not. lock no, the child I did in the not. basement? So you're denying no, all No, I this. did not. Why do you think uh, the little girl's father is so upset? I believe he took this out of context. And the father, it's, by the way, what is the father's name? So I, can I believe his name is Michael. Okay. I've never met Michael. him. Michael. I've never met him. We've had a. You never met him. We've had a phone conversation. We had one phone conversation where we. Wait, you've known the woman for two years. Two years. You've been with her uh, for about a relationship. Four, four, five, four or six months. Four or six counting, months, right? How have you never met this child that lives with you? How have you never met her father? That's on him to come and check on his child. Okay. Okay. Period. You're right. You're right. So he doesn't come over. He doesn't check on her. We had one phone conversation to where I was sitting next to his child, and he called the phone. And I allowed him to speak to his child, and we had a conversation man to man. And we delivered respect for each other. At this time, we didn't call ourselves together. I was just there for her. And you were I, just friends at that time. Yeah, and we weren't together. Here recently, we got together, and all of a sudden, all this comes up. Do you think that's what about. the problem is, because you're with his ex? I have no idea what the problem is. I'm simply here to defend myself. Okay, so obviously these accusations came from somebody. Where did they come from? They came from her. Your, the three the girl that you're dating? Oh, the three-year-old, three because she goes and visits her family. Okay, so I, why would a three-year-old, first of all, and we know, and I know, mm -hmm. three-year-old children, because I had two of them, yeah. they normally don't make things up. I mean, unless it's about fairy tales and yeah. Scooby-Doo. Yeah. But they're not talking about people beating them and locking them in 
Scary place. The whole thing with the basement is we washed the clothes in the basement. Right. And after potty training her, she went two weeks without wetting the bed, without potty, without pottying on herself. So when she reneged on that, I was like, well, look, this is what you have to do. You have to stand at the top of the staircase and throw your clothes into the basement. That's where the clothes are washed. That's like our laundry chute. And she says she, don't, she doesn't want to go down there. She never goes down there. So let's be really clear on this. You never hit this child. I have popped her when she had on a pamper, but that was months ago. You popped her when she had a pamper on? Yes. What does that mean, I popped her? Just popped her. And you it, swatted her in the butt? Okay, if you, if you want to call it that, but... A swat, a pop, She doesn't, she doesn't even cry. She does not cry. And since then... Why did you swat her or pop her or whatever? For what reason? Okay, there was, there was I, I, three, three chances, okay? Um, she called it on the kitchen wall. I sat down, I told her, baby girl, you can't do this. You, you cannot do this because I'm renting this place. It's going to cost a lot of money. She did it again, all in her room, different colors everywhere. Right. I spent my morning scrubbing the walls, and I popped it one time and put it in the corner for two minutes. I would never hurt that child. Okay, so you're saying you didn't hurt the I'm, child. I'm here to tell you the truth, and if I need judgment, I don't want judgment from anybody well, except for you. Well, and you took a lie detector test, right? Yeah. So you feel confident with the results of the lie detector test? I feel very confident. Good. Um, but the father, he's definitely it's fine. This the He can wrong feel way. the way he wants to. He, he hasn't seen the angry. way I live. He hasn't came to my house. It's getting to the point to where I'm, I'm afraid that he might come to my door, and I, I will have to defend myself, and I will lose what I've earned. So I called the show. I've been asking people to call the show for me. Because you want to straighten things out. I want to straighten things out. If I'm wrong, let me know, because mm -hmm. I respect you, Steve, and I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and let anybody without responsibilities only, only to... <laughs> Only to take care of yourself, tell me anything. Now, Michael says that you've abused your girlfriend. Also. That's, that's not true. It's not true. That's not true. You've I defend her? women I don't know. You've, have, have you ever hit her? No. And these accusations from Michael, the, the father of this child, how has this affected you? This has affected me in a great way to the point to where I've started crying, to the point I'm feeling emotional you right now. Crying? Yes. Why would it make you cry? Though? Because I want a child very bad. Okay. You know. But you're, like, if you know you're dating somebody that had a child from a previous relationship, you know people are not going to be happy. You're going to have to deal with this. Of course not. And this is something so that now you you're hearing this and it made you cry? Listen, <laughs> world to me. Flora means world to me. And I'll do anything to protect them. And these, this, what I'm going through, I don't deserve. I, I got two jobs. I'm broke taking care of his kid. So what are you hoping to happen today? I'm hoping... And it's not my choice whether he's in her life or not, but I don't want to take a biological child away from a biological father. I didn't have my father very much. And I know how he feels compassionate about his daughter, but if he's going to step up, step up in a positive way. All right, well, he's here, and he wants to talk to you. Let's bring him out. Dwayne did not lock my daughter in the basement. I have never locked that child in the bank. She said, Wayne, give me pop pop. She's sure. saying that she got hit. He's one of the most deceptive persons that I've ever interviewed in polygraph. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. If somebody's mad and they got something to say, come on, say it to my face. Man, listen here, listen here. For real, dog. I'm for real, dog. I'm here. She ain't your daughter. She ain't your daughter. She's my daughter. She's my daughter. She's my daughter. You have no right to kill my kid. I don't care if she's taller than your wall. I don't care if she's saying it. I don't care what she's doing. It's a damn thing. You know you ain't lost. You know you ain't lost. Two years ago, man, you a sucker. Put your hands on me. 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 Because you know I'm going to bust your jaw wide open. Whatever. You can do it. I'm taking ass with this phone. I'm trash you, you girl. It's, it's not trash you, son. I will trash you. It doesn't matter. I will trash you. Just it. think about it. Okay, Stop. Not okay. You were dating Flora at one time. Yes. You were married. Yes. You had a little dating. girl. You guys break up. She moves on with her life. Now she's with this guy, right? Mm-hmm. You're still seeing your daughter. 
Mm -hmm. And how did you? I haven't been seeing my daughter. Floor's not letting me see my daughter. Why not? I called child protection at the time. I stopped communication with my daughter over three weeks ago due to the fact that I called child protective services, due to the fact that my daughter came to my mom and told my mom what happened. My mom in turn called me at work. I work in New Jersey. But I'm I live saying, in New did Jersey. your little girl come to you and tell you this was happening? No, she told me on the phone. She told you on the phone? Yes. And you did, what did she say to you? She comes out and she says, she said, Wayne, give me pop pow. I said, Wayne, give you pop pow. She said, Wayne, give me pop pow because I pee on his bed. I said, you pee on Wayne's bed, he give you pop pow. She said, yeah, and he put me in basement with spiders. So how am I going to react to that? Uh, what, I'm being what, a dad. Did, did you clarify pow pow what that means? Pow pow. She's, like she's, she's, she's saying yeah, she's saying that she got hit. Okay. I don't even yo. Out of all the years, I have a six year old, a five year old, and a three year old with Flora. Okay. Understand? Not once did I hit my kids. So to let another man that she's been seeing for six months think he gonna put his hands on my daughter, I'll bury you burgundy, bro. Right. I will bury you burgundy. <laughs> Word up, and you can know she know it. She know it, too. She know it. She know it. Okay. Word is God, she know it. Michael, now, I love your passion as a father and the protection that you want to offer your kids. <clears throat> but when, and, and believe me, and I've had to realize this, too, myself, you become so angry and so impassioned that you might do something stupid. Exactly. And then I wanted my first reaction was to go right to his house and right. just wild out. Right. My mom's, I'm going to keep it real. I'm a recovering right. addict. I'm a recovering addict. I've done time in jail. You know what I'm saying? So my mom was like, don't go over there and wild out and throw your life away over a punk. Right. Over a punk. Don't throw your life away you know over what? a punk. Because you know what's going to happen. I'm going to whoop what? his face in, and, and then what? I'm going to jail. That's all that's going to happen. And you know what? Your mother gave you good advice. Because you need to be there for your daughter. <laughs> I'm going to tear you up, girl. <clears throat> So your daughter tells you this on the phone. What have you done to find out the truth? I spoke to my daughter. Since, since this happened, Floyd's not letting me speak to my daughter. She says that she's going to have her call Wayne Daddy. She has not. The, the day before yesterday was my two other daughters' first day of school. She didn't even no, bother No, she told you she was going to have Dwayne, uh, your daughter called. Him Dwayne. Daddy. She said that and I, I will no longer ever see my daughter again. Why? Due to the fact, because I call Child Protective Services on her, because of her man, and my daughter claims that her man hit her. So you confronted her about this? Yes, I and told her. She... This is on the phone, because I work in she... New Jersey. And I work did... seven days a week. And what did she say about this? Um, she, she was like, she, automatically she denied the whole thing. She automatically went to his side. I'm trying to talk to her. I'm like, Flora, she's three years old. How is she going to go into that much detail about what happened? How do I know you got a basement? I've never even been in your house. How is it that you've never met this guy? I never met this guy because I was incarcerated. Oh, you were incarcerated. Yes, I oh. was incarcerated. Right. Since I came home in December, I've been trying to work on my recovery and get myself right. Every day, this is a process. And you, you're, you're overcoming it. Yes. Good for you. I am a great father. There's two other kids involved. I won't mention their names. But Floor has three kids by me. Okay. Child Protective Services you're a good came dad. involved before. Yes, they, yes, I am a good dad. I call my kids every day. I speak to my kids every day. They know who their father is. I've been very much involved in their life despite my mishaps. Okay. Do you support your, uh, this floor and, and your children? Uh, well, excuse me? Do you give her money to take care um, of your children? Honestly, I just started working. I have not, I'll be honest, I have not contributed. I have paid support on my other two. I have not contributed towards I am very much trying, I'm trying to be involved in life. She's not letting me and be involved. It's in a case of you haven't been working and you've been incarcerated yes. or... The yes. fact that you're just mad at her. No, just the fact, just, no, I would never take out what I have between Flora on my child. Right. I call for my child every Good single attitude. day. Good attitude. Every single day. I could care less what she does. So with you're the saying you're trying to get work in and give some money so you can Exactly. I'm trying to get on my feet. I, and, and something that we learn in recovery is the fact that, that you got to learn how to take care of yourself first before I can do anything else with my kids. Don't mean that I'm not involved in my kids' life. You know what I mean? And honestly, if he's going to play a role, a role model to my child, then I respect that, but you're not gonna touch my child. And I'm so, not having that. I'm not going for that. I don't care what I did. You're not touching my kid. And just so I'm clear on this, did you take a lie detector test before? Yes, I did. You did. Um, what are you hoping to happen today? Honestly, I was hoping today. And I'm still hoping. I hope that he didn't lock my daughter in the basement. Of course. You know, I don't, I don't want, I hope my little girl didn't really go through that. Maybe she exaggerated a little bit, but I'm going to still be a dad and react the way I'm going to react. It's my duty to protect her. I am her father. And on top of which, of the fact, just the, the whole, <clears throat> the whole situation, I don't care if she was coloring on his wall, on his bed, she broke a vase, 
He has no right. He is not her, Flora's husband. He is, has no kids with Flora. For him to go ahead and want to step in and discipline my child with his hands. I never touched my kids. To let another man think that he's going to touch my kid is not going down. It's not happening. Okay. It's not. So basically you're here today because you want to find out the truth. Exactly. All right. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get her story because I know everybody's very emotional right now. So I'm going to ask you to leave the stage. I'm going to no talk problem. to Flora, and then we'll bring you out, and we'll get to the results. No problem. Start the test. Thanks. Dwayne did not lock my daughter in the basement. We're talking about a three-year-old. I have never locked that child in the basement. Are you going to accuse no, my man? No, no. He's more okay, of a father no, no. than you no, no. are. He's one of the most deceptive persons that I've ever interviewed and polygraphed. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Let's bring out Flora. How you doing, Flora? I'm fine. How are you, Steve? Good. Um, you're doing the show, and um, Dwayne, your boyfriend, he says that um, your ex has accused him of spanking your daughter mm -hmm. and locking her in a basement. I understand that. Okay. So you're here today, and what do you want to say? I just want to tell Michael the truth, okay? Because I seriously think that this is all BS. I know damn well that he, Dwayne did not lock my daughter in the basement because I'm always with him, and not even that. When I'm not there, his mama's there. But not even that. I'd like to tell Michael, if you're so much of a father and I'm keeping you from your child, where, where have you been in February? Where have you been in March? Yeah, I left you in February. But when I was with you, you were a father. When, you, when I left, you weren't a father. So why do you want to step up now and all of a sudden, all of a sudden decide you want to make these accusations and step up in your child's life? You're here today, and you're saying Dwayne, your boyfriend, has never locked your daughter in a basement, and that he hasn't hit her with um, excessive force. Does he no. spank your daughter? Yes, I allow my man to spank my daughter. He's been my best friend, and he's the only father this wait, wait, little wait girl a second, knows. Wait a second. Wait a second. This is a guy you've been dating for six months. I've been dating for six months. I've known for Why? two I years. I don't give a damn how old you know him. You've been dating for six months, and you let this man spank your yeah, three-year-old child? Yes, yes, I do. I let him spank my child. He doesn't abuse my child, well, and see, my child loves him. Because I have a... I, I understand that, and, and, and not I everybody operates and I the let same some way. Who I've been dating for six Look months? Look, not everybody operates the same way. I am a great mother. I'm the mother and father. This little girl. You might want to reconsider that statement if you're letting here. this guy spank your daughter. No, I'm not reconsidering my statement. I'm a great mother, and I stand by my word. I'm a great mother. You can sit here and you can sugarcoat anything you want and I say spanking is bad. It's abusive. Guy, it's not. Why do you let this guy spank your three-year-old daughter? Because he is going to be my man and he's the only what, one that instilling has morals to do with and it. values in that my life. That has nothing to do with it. Why do you let if this man... If he doesn't like it, he can step up and he can I be a like man it. and be a father. I don't like it. Well, you know what? There's nothing you can do about it, Steve. Because honestly, he doesn't abuse my daughter, and he spanked her one Hold time. On. Hold why? on. And the time why? that he spanked why her, you I let... told him no, we gotta you... stop spanking you... her. This is bad. And what did we do <laughs> that moment on? So it doesn't matter how so long you it agree happened. With me. When I realized it was wrong, yes, Steve, and I stopped it. Well, well then and why I are you arguing it? with me? Because you're making me seem because I spanked my daughter. I'm a bad mother. Hold on. First of all, we're talking about a three-year-old. She was spanked because she peed on the bed a couple of times. That doesn't make her bad. That doesn't make her anything. But when you've been using the bathroom consistently for four and a half weeks, what do you say to your child when she just pees all over the place? I go, honey, what happened? Honey, what happened after four weeks of her using the bathroom consistently? So children, once they get potty trained, they don't make any more mistakes. No, they do make mistakes. Like when they have a bad dream or when I give them too much water before they go to bed. Yes. Then that would be your word. fault. Listen. It doesn't matter. I stand by my defense. And when I spanked my you daughter, it was injustice right. So I'm not going to let you sit here and accuse Man, me and say I'm a bad place. parent. God forbid something ever happens to my wife and she's not around. And I say I fall in love with somebody else. And I bring that person into my house. I'm telling you right now, that person never, ever has the right to discipline my children. That's me. Because they're not the mother. I am dead. And I, and I don't discipline my children physically. Now, I don't disagree with it with all parents, but I do disagree with it with three-year-old little babies. Because a three-year-old is a baby. I understand, Steve, you had a problem with it. But I feel that for her father, her biological daddy, to have a problem with it and not be in her life since February, he knew you know where let's, I lived. Let's, he let's, could have came you know over. Let's move past that. Let's move past if he has a problem or not. You are mommy. 
And what I'm mad about is that you don't have a problem with it. But now you say you're kind of flip-flopping all over the have, place. Steve, you didn't I have didn't problem. have a problem now with you it have a before, problem. but when I spanked my own child and I checked her after that, I noticed she had a little red mark. It wasn't, it wasn't so dark. It was light. But that was enough for me to be like, you know what? I'm done. I don't want to spank so my child anymore. So maybe you were a little excessive scared. in it. Yeah, I admit. Okay, there. You're admitting it. Now, why is he coming on here and saying he never, you never spanked your child? What's he lying about? Because he, he don't call popping spanking, and I consider spanking a spanking. Pop a spanking. So he's just twisting words around. Dwayne doesn't know, know how to use his words good, I feel. Oh, but everybody he knows what spanking right is, thing. right? Yeah. Okay. So why are you actually spanking child for going to the bathroom? I don't spank her for not going to the bathroom. For the last going time to the I spanked her, I spanked her for uh, it was a really good reason. What was it? Like my daughter does things, okay? Like Dwayne told you perfectly, the whole writing of the wall. Her doing it three times, I didn't went through this already, like six months ago before Dwayne. So she already knows not to be writing on walls. Yeah, but even if she did write on the walls, even would then, be okay, Dwayne so be I'm justified? Wrong. No, I'm saying, would Dwayne be justified in spanking her? I don't know. I don't, I really don't. And since I told him I don't like it anymore, we've stopped. Okay. So, I mean, I, that's all. Right, well, I'm not the biological father. Michael is. He's upset by this. Let's bring him up. I have never locked that child in the basement. Are you going to no, accuse well, my man? No, no, no. He's more okay, of a father than you are. He's one of the most deceptive persons that I've ever interviewed in polygraph. He is a wolf in sheep's clothes. If somebody's mad and they got something to say, come on and say it to my face! The thought of my daughter being locked in the basement infuriates me. Dwayne did not lock my daughter in the basement. We're talking about a three-year-old. She told me on the phone, he put me in basement with spiders. I'm the good guy. I would never hurt that child. You are such a no, liar. You're full of such a liar. Listen, How are you going to accuse woman, my man? Don't, don't get, you I'm not accusing your man. I'm, going, I'm protecting I'm our daughter. I'm protecting our you're daughter. You're protecting her. Whether she's right Where on the wall. Where were you? Where were, she you? Where were you in Where Astro? Where were you in um, well, August? July. You can talk whatever you want. Where were you? Where were you? I was in Jersey. You know who I yeah, was. And in April, she was with me. She was with me. She was with me. I called you. I called no. What about you? You're not even right six months. You know what? You're not even right here, man. Oh man, no, you're full of it. Now, nobody ain't never keep nothing from the nobody. World, but oh, I know Floor, you're full of it, man. Liar. You are so full Whatever. of it. You know why you're full of it, Floor? Because you just said right now, four weeks that she's been potty trained. You don't think she's gonna have an accident in four weeks? So that gives him right to hit my daughter? It's not happening. It ain't Listen, going down. You I don't care do what you say. What you say? I've been stepped up. I've been stepped up. I always get the contact with you. I always get the contact with you. And you know my situation. You're not a father. My mother takes everything. My mother takes everything. Take your every weekend. Take your every weekend. Every weekend. You cannot be home. I'm a yeah, whatever. You are. That's I'm you whatever get. you want me to be, baby. I'm whatever you, know. you want me to be. You know it. You yeah, know it. I know it. Trifling Mike. ass. Michael. Trifling. Trifling. I flow. Michael, it, it upsets me just the fact that she goes, you were never a father. Mm -hmm. That bothers me because you know what? If you never were a father, mm -hmm. she should have kept having kids with you. Mm -hmm. Number one. And number two, hold on. She knew I was a father. And number two, I am a father. Number two, you just called her, you're a trifling ass hoe. Okay? Don't do that. Whether, whatever your feelings are, whatever anger you have, don't do that. Because when you look back and your children, this is the mother of your children. So you don't right. do that. You're right. You're right. You're right. Now, both of you, you're not, either one of you with your anger and you're, you're going crazy and screaming, neither one of you are setting a good example for your children right now. Right. So I want you to calm down. And let's think about what's best and find out the truth about what happened to your daughter, okay? Now, you have been telling Michael that he doesn't hit her, right? That Dwayne doesn't hit your daughter. No, I just told him that he spanks her. No, you told me that you talked to her and she, he, she denied all of it, right? She denied it okay. until now. <laughs> Is that true? I guess. Okay. See, I don't know where I'm going with you either, because you don't seem like you're a very truthful person. Because I have it written down on paper that I told you, but you're sitting here calling me a liar. Call me a liar. Yeah. I'm whatever you want well, me to I'm be. Well, I'm going to call you a liar because you sent uh, text messages saying, 
I allowed him to spank her. Yes, you, uh, you did today sent him a text saying, I allowed him to spank her. Now, you've been telling Michael, no, 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 he doesn't spank her. But you said today in a text, and we got the text because Michael gave it to us, I allowed him to spank her. Yes, I told him I would need his help in parenting. We did not spank her anymore as of probably a month ago. That's when I made the referral. <laughs> I know he has you spanked her. I allowed him, and so I'm taking my man home. She loves him. Yes, I am taking my man home. No matter what this lie detector says, wow. I am. Even if he fails. I'm going home with my family. Man. He's more okay, of a father than okay. are. You're sitting hold here on, like, wow. Yeah, you are so I'm asking you, you, if he fails the lie yourself, detector mama, test, that if, he's, if he did, let's say he did lock your daughter in the basement, you'd still go home with him? I would go home and I would do what I got to do and I would pack my stuff and because I, I don't want to believe that he put her in the basement. I do not believe that he is such a great man to my daughter and he loves her. What uh, here's, here's, this, this story is taking a little bit of a twist because he's come out here and says, oh, you know, I don't spank her. I never put my hands on a child. But it turns out you allow it. You let him do it. And let, we're not twisting words here. If you spank a child, you know you're spanking a child. He knows he disciplined his child. We differ on whether a three-year-old should be disciplined. I think at three, you don't really know a lot. You're still learning your way. You're just three years old. You're, you're small. And I don't think spanking a three-year-old is going to get you anywhere. I don't think it's good. And I especially don't think it, that it's good that some man that really is just in the recent months has become really involved with you is spanking your child. I think it confuses a child. I don't think it's helpful for a child. But I'm not a child expert or a doctor or a psychologist. I still feel this like is just me as a parent <laughs> or as a fellow human being giving you my advice. Um, let's bring Dwayne back out. He is a wolf in sheep's clothes. If somebody's mad and they got something to say, come on, say it to my face. I guess, I, guess, I guess my problem here is um, after the lie detector test was giving, after everybody took a lie detector test, that's when she sent these text messages to Michael. You see, I have no idea of conversations that they hold because it's none of my business. I'd rather not dwell in it because it's just going to cause more problems. You know what? If this is your you. woman and this is... The... Baby, stop lying. I show you all of my text messages. Listen, I tell you the whole truth listen. about everything listen, and you're telling me you listen, don't know. Listen, I do see the text messages. Okay. I you see, just no, said no, you don't I know see, everything. I, I seen the text messages last night. Because... She sent them today. Out. Please, please, please hear me out. Please hear me out. I seen the text messages last night and I was upset about it. Because she, you know, I was texting her and she fell asleep or whatever. But the thing is... So you went and checked her phone? I checked No, phone. I don't call it checking my phone. Yeah, I give no, my I, man I, permission listen, to... Listen. It's about trust. I, I walked it's in. about, it's about trust. trust that he wouldn't have to look at your phone. Listen, he I was just wondering... He don't have to. I tell him to listen. because I don't have nothing to hide from this scumbag. You know what? Oh, Only people that do it is people that no, they don't trust. No, it's the people who trust. Like, I tell my man, I ain't got nothing to hide. You, I, I tell him to but read my But he still checks your phone when you go to sleep. Because I want him to see what he's texting me. I know, but what me. I'm saying is, he says, I got nothing to hide. But as soon as you fall asleep, he goes over and checks your phone. I was <laughs> ready to sleep when I got back. I was, 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 I did you lie when Dwayne was abusing Flora? No, I went by what my daughter said, no. Okay. Are you lying when you say your daughter is being abused? No. Okay. You answered no. And you didn't make this up in any way. Not at all. The results for your lie detector test is that you are telling the truth. Michael, this yeah. is the part I want you to be calm. Before you took a lie detector test, before the show, before you then text message anybody else, 
Um, you were asked, I don't care. has Dwayne ever physically abused you? And you answered no. Yeah. And you told the truth. So we know that Dwayne's never abused you. You were asked, have you ever locked your daughter in a basement? And I told the truth. Did you? Yeah, I told the truth. I told what him that I put her on the front step and I went to act like I was going to close the door and I felt guilty and I stopped. Shh. That's the truth. Boo, 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 whatever. Half of y'all probably okay. beat your child. Okay. It did worse okay. than hey, that. You know what? Man, you I'm really ready to go, Hold man. on. You really did the absolute best thing you by getting your thoughts involved. You should have stepped up if you had a problem with it. Step up. Be a so basically, she's coming home. She coming home, Mama. She coming home. She's coming home, baby. How much home. you want to bet? You, she's coming home. Uh, you know what? She's you. Going with her you have to jump for three Michael. months, Michael. and you act like you can Michael. conquer Michael. the world. Michael. You're low Michael. life. Michael. You're not even your father. Michael. All right, Michael. Bye. Michael. Where have you been at hey. in February, March, Listen. April, May, June, oh, July? Man. You locked your child in the basement. Okay, if you consider leaving the door halfway open and not shutting it all the way. So be you it. You felt guilty about so it. So be it. You I felt, felt guilty, guilty about, about it. Why? Because I was abused as a child. That's why I felt guilty. Because I was like, two wrongs don't make a right. Oh, man. That's you why. God, yo. You need some serious counseling. You no, really I don't need serious counseling. Holy shit. Something's not right there. You were again, after that, which you just admitted, uh, you said no on the lie detector test, but you admit that you did that to your daughter. Um, besides one time, have you ever spanked your daughter with excessive force? Besides one time, you answered no. Have you witnessed Dwayne using excessive force with your daughter? Nope. Okay. Never witnessed it. Have you ever witnessed Dwayne locking your daughter in the basement? I've never seen Dwayne lock her in the basement. Okay. The results of your lie detector test. You admitted before the lie detector there. test that you're a liar and you uh, you failed the damn lie detector test. So if you want to run out this yeah. damn stage so bad, <laughs> run off it. The results of your lie detector test, which is not a shock to anybody in this room, I believe, is that you did not tell the truth. <laughs> I'm coming, baby. I'm coming for mine. <laughs> So just because I usually answer, uh, ask everybody that comes on the show, I want to be perfectly clear. If Dwayne fails this lie detector test, you are going to stay with him. I'm staying with my man. And you're staying what? with the man. You took a lie detector test before the show. Yes, I did. And you were asked, and, you know, I'll get to a point in a minute, but have you ever physically abused Flora? You answered no. And the results of that question is you told the truth. So both of you passed that portion of the lie detector test. Now, you were asked additional questions too, Dwayne. Have you ever locked Flora's daughter in a basement? No. You answered no. Have you ever locked... By the way, when you hear her saying that she locked her daughter in a basement... I hope you don't fabricate Hold on, I'm going to get to results, but I'm asking you. You heard her admit that she locked uh, the daughter in a basement. Your feelings on that before I go any further? I, I have mixed emotions about it myself. You but have mixed the emotions? Thing, but, but the thing is, I mean, it all considers what, what you mean by that because... If you take a basement and shut the door in the, ba the basement, We scared. never shut the door. I promise you, she is never unsupervised in my house except for her room, which I gave except her. Except when she's in the basement with yeah, the door no. being closed yes, on yes. No. Okay. She's yes, never guys. unsupervised. Okay. Never unsupervised in my house. Do you feel what, when, when she's there, she has to be supervised? At, at times, I feel I do need to step up. You took it out of context. See, I feel we are a team. You both are so. It's, it's, it's okay. You, yeah, you know. Steve, I still okay, let's right, get to your right, results. Right. I'm, I'm going to read them. Care, babe. We just want, we're going to go home. Have anyway. you ever locked? You know why you want to get home? Because you're caught up here. That's why. No, you not because I'm caught up in here. Because I'm not going to let the body. That's it. You know what, Flora? Right I, I believe we're I'm a good mother. No. You I know, know what? Hold on. We, Steve, you, I provided you a life where he wasn't there. You admitted before the lie detector test that you're a liar, and you, uh, you failed the damn lie detector test, so if you want to run off this yeah. damn stage so bad, yeah. run off it. Because I spanked her more than one time. That's why. So that's considered excessive force. That's considered excessive force when you spank your child more than one time. The more you run your mouth, the more the truth comes out. So, Dwayne... Yes, uh, and uh, you, you, you twist everything too. When I ask you a question, oh, you took it out of context. Oh, you know, this and that. That's, that's you know what? It sounds like two morons over here f defending each other. And this moron over here, no matter what you do or what you didn't do, if you did something wrong, 
I'm standing by my man. <laughs> and you know what? That scares me because there's a three-year-old daughter that we have, a three-year-old little girl that needs somebody to protect her. What, he needs her? Does she That's need right. him? She needs you. She needs you. She needs a gangbanger in her life. Uh, she needs uh, that. Well, I don't think she needs that in her those? life. <laughs> Did you know he's yeah, a gangbanger? Yeah, I slept with him, but I'm not sleeping with him now when he's doing it. Well, just read the rest of Dwayne's results, and we can throw them both off the stage. Yeah. Have you ever locked Flora's daughter in a basement? You answered no. Have you ever locked Flora's daughter in a basement more than one time? You answered no. Have you ever spanked Flora's daughter with excessive force? You answered no. And the results of your lie detector test. Shockingly, is that you did not tell the truth. Listen. He's a liar, just Listen. like her. I'm Listen. not surprised. This, this is, this is. You don't know what you're talking about. You're not a father and you want to trash him? Oh, you bitch. You smart, you smart. So I'm asking you to sit the back to the stand up. You know why I am. She know why I am. She know why I am. You know what? I know why I am. I beg you to stand up when you had a chance to. Michael, 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 bring it down. Now, I'm not going to just let you speak. Okay, I'm just not gonna let you speak because everything that you say, everything that you say is spun to make you look better, make her look better. I have never locked that child in the basement. Why did you file the lie detector test? Because he witnessed it. I don't. I don't because he witnessed it. He witnessed it. He witnessed it. There you he go. Can't tell me Thank what to you do with my child. Get the hell off my stage. <laughs>
prize in the sky, yes. that you make the good fight for her, that you don't do anything stupid, and that you will fight for your daughter. Dwayne, don't ever touch my daughter. And look in my eyes when I say this. Flora will tell you, don't do it. As for Flora, you made your bed, you lying, man.